Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Kona 2 Broom. Now this was developed by Parabol, published by Raven's Court once again and is usually available for £24.99 slash $29.99 but of course it is absolutely included in Xbox Game Pass now so you know the drill homies. So Kona a, a, a very well liked sequel and a very surprising one at that too. Basically, we play once again as Detective Gal for Bell, uh, where we have to go into a rural mining village of the of northern Canada in the 1970s and uncover the mystery of a bizarre mist that is overtaken called the Broom. Um, so it's a it's a great story. It, again, it's pretty much the same as the first one, where it's kind of a walking simulator, but it's got a great storytelling mechanic etc etc so as for achievements now effectively this is one game that is just collectible insanities so you get a couple obviously story related ones a couple of miscellaneous ones easy as well but there are a lot of collectibles that we need to be gathering so you need to be doing the exact same that i'm doing or check the timestamps below uh either uh, either way we can get this done in potentially about Maybe four, five to six hours. Make sure, though, to put it on Survivalist. That is the first thing that we need to be doing here as we start a new game. Uh, so make sure to put it on Survivalist because we will get an achievement for completing the game on Survivalist mode. Um, and the narration frequency is minimum, full, whatever. That doesn't matter. But again, make sure that you put it on Survival. Uh, the difference between Survival and uh, just normal adventure mode there's not a lot of difference in all fairness. Uh, you may get one or two more of the broom enemies appear. Uh, the broom sort of, um, the broom enemies being just the uh, animals, as we'll be able to see. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah. So that's it. So as long as we play on survival, again, I think I might have died once through my own stupidity. But it is very hard to uh, die, so survival mode again is still pretty easy. Plus, we will get an achievement as well for not killing any animal, apart from the broom animals. Now, a quick explanation. Obviously, as we trek through the uh, forests and everything, we're going to find wolves and bears and stuff like that. Your best bet is to either shoot at them so they run away, or shoot to the side of them so they run away. Or you can take a picture, uh, or you can just run away yourself. Um, again, so just, again, as we're just doing here, we're continuing forward into the moonlight until we see another boat. It may take another minute or two. Um, but with the broom animals, they basically look like big ghost animals. You'll be able to see exactly what I mean. Those ones you can kill. Now, we're going to need to kill quite a few in order to get every, uh, collectible and everything going. So, uh, yeah, for now, enjoy the scenery. It's a beautiful moonlight. Garl saw a boat in the distance clearly piloted by one of his own. Had he finally made it to civilization? His hopes were immediately drowned out by the sound of gunshots. Time to flee again, and fast. And of course, to avoid dying by gunshots, which uh, would normally come in handy if you want to complete the game. Uh, now, you can't actually get shot, but all you got to do is just swim forward until you see the light popping up, and then you'll have to walk forward a few times until you get into the cabin, into the toastiness and the warmingness. That is a word, it's uh, all made up. Oh, 
The bleeding and the hypothermia were tearing at Carl's poor body. When he finally saw a light in the distance, he was filled with a faint sense of hope. Could it be a refuge? So as you can see then in the top left corner, you have your health bar, which is the uh, plus icon, which is obviously first aid, and the fire icon. Now, obviously, when you're outside in the deathly freezing cold, again, this really doesn't apply to Canadians because they, they're always already used to the cold. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you obviously need the both icons really to be full. So go forward as we get into the cabin, pick up the first aid kit with the A button there. Uh, you can press B to close it, and then what you can do, you can either uh, press the Y button to open your inventory full, or press up on the D-pad to go into your sort of quick inventory. Press the A button when you're on your first aid kit, and that is job done. So at least you're feeling, you know, health, the health benefits of all life. And again, once you press the Y button, you can also have a look at the map and everything as well. Pick up the logs to the left of you, put them straight in front of you. That'll automatically start a fire, and as you can see there in the top left corner, the flame icon will be going up all the way. So as long as those two are up, then you should be good to go. So now we're just going to nip around the room. We're going to grab a few things that we're going to need anyway, uh, so we can get some ammunition. We can obviously pick up our revolver as well, um, have a look on the table, and across to the other side as well. There are also a couple of achievements here. Um, not here, but... For collecting every weapon, which the first one is actually in this cabin. It's the hatchet, which we're going to pick up. And there is... Nah, 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 nah. Sorry, there's so many bloody collectibles. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what the hell they all are. Ah, uh, yes. So, what have we got? Uh, killing every animal. So, we got St. Saint Mary statues to look at. Buying a drink in every vending machine. Um, finding all hockey cards, all chests, find six frozen bodies, collect 20 herbs. And the other one, which I was, what I was going to say, as we can nip into the bed, we're going to get our first achievement as well. Um, we have to collect 40 batteries and 100 spare parts. So basically, everywhere that we go, in terms of every building that we go into, etc., and every room, it's always worth just having a little look around and making sure just to, because we're going to need some spare parts anyway and the batteries for our flashlight. But it is always worth, in order to get those two achievements, just keep walking around everywhere and interact with everything, uh, or most things, in every room that you enter. We have to get to Hamilton Manor without delay. We have to get to Hamilton Manor without delay. Now, normally, we would, if we didn't have a whole bunch of collectibles to get. So, hopefully, you know, nobody's dying or anything. Uh, <laughs> sorry if you are, but uh, achievements and stuff. Right, so once you've got your hatchet, you've got your journal, your revolver, you'll have to pick up your camera here on the left as well. Um, if you do try to go out the door without picking absolutely everything up, the game will tell you that you basically need to pick everything up anyway, so that's job done. Um, so, yes, so as you can see then, if you press up or down on the D-pad, as I said, you'll go into your quick inventory where you can find your journal, your revolver, your hatchet, your whatever you've got in your inventory. So, we're going to nip straight out. It's pretty damn cold right now. And let us head to the left. And of course, this is kind of like a walking, jogging simulator. So, a lot of the times, it will just be silence as we just deftly move forward. But you can sprint uh, with the left stick, clicking the left stick in. And you can obviously see the icon there in the top left corner next to the flame. Um, obviously, when you run out of stamina, you'll just have to stop for a minute. But heading to this building, you can click the... Uh, there's some batteries there on the left. Uh, you can click the right stick in if you want to pop your flashlight on as well. Um, but there's a couple of batteries again. Make sure to just interact with everything um, or most things in the building, in every building that we go into. And we're actually going to... Now, there are also three Inuk Shooks. They're like... Kind of like Stonehenge, big statue things. So we're going to head down this snowy path again. And we're going to sort of take a little bit of a slight right, but continue going straight 
forward, sort of up this little mountain. Now, a lot of the time, things do look obviously a little bit of the same. So obviously, just have a look at the environment, make sure we're in the same sort of area. But as we go past the trees here, this is the first Inuk Shuk out of three in the game that we're going to find. These stones came from a long time past, from a local people who had an organic relationship with these lands. Carl. And so also, if we have a look at the map, you can press the A button to put markers down. This is obviously going to come in mega handy while we look for, like, the one billionth collectible in the game. Yes, it's all fun. All absolute fun on the bun. Right, so... Uh, two things we're going to be uh, looking for here is the neck is the first herb. So what we'll do is head straight, so it, it literally straight down from where we were, and then if we st uh, go slightly left, where you're sort of on the path once again, again with the mist and everything, it can be kind of hard to see. But as long as you see this building straight in front of us here, you know you're on the right path. Slightly to the left, this is our first herb out of twenty. Some. Sheriff Labrador tea, la uh, tea leaves. So that is the first one. And then what we're going to do from here, we are actually going to be grabbing the... Now, I actually tried getting rid of the marker here. And as it turns out, it wasn't going <laughs> that smoothly. Uh, but we're going to be grabbing our first chest uh, ever so slightly. So if you can pop the marker sort of directly straight in front of you there where the two little icons are. There is also achievements as well related to the journal. So basically, every new area that we enter, every new thing that we discover, Carl will put it in his journal. Sometimes we'll have to take pictures of those as well. Um, but again, obviously, you'll know that because I'll show you the journal every time we get a new entry just to make sure that we're on the same path. But if we continue sort of heading forward and continuing sort of left up this hill into the trees once more, um, you can see a bear. And you can see a couple of tents. And lucky for us, this bear is a bit of a wiener. It's a bit scared of us. Because we are Carl the Bear. And it will eventually just knob off. There it goes. So thank you very much, bear. So as you can see there, in the top right-hand corner, uh, you know when you'll get a new diary entry. Press the A button there. That will save the game on the campfire. This is That is another important thing to mention, by the way. Every time that we see one of these campfires or the log fires in any of the buildings, make sure this is basically your save point. There's plenty of them in the game, but if you don't save and you've gone, a, you know, quite a lot through the game or you've done a lot of collectibles and you haven't saved, you might end up <laughs> quite a while um, later on. So make sure to save at every opportunity that you can get. So go ahead. Uh... Get your camera out again through your quick inventory and take a picture of the campfire. And again, you'll know when you've got that picture right when you have the ability to press A to keep it. Um, if you didn't have that option come up, then just take the picture again. So uh, continue on forward anyway, just to the right past the campfire, tent fire of a life. And then eventually, again, like I said, any animals that we see... Make sure to either just run straight past them or not bother at all. You're not killing any animals. Uh, now, this is our first it's story related, but this is our first out of six frozen bodies that we're going to see. Nice and spooky. And we're going to take another picture of him as well. Because why the hell not? Because we're not just investigating the mist. We're trying to do some Logan Paul weird stuff as well. Because uh, the uh, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, I'm sorry, but those guys... <laughs> Biggest douchebags in the universe. Okay, you didn't actually have to take a pic uh, picture of the gun, I don't think. So what we're going to do is interact with the frozen body. And we're just going to interact with everything on his body. The main thing we'll be grabbing, though, is the uh, key access card. Right from his... Uh, on a hand-drawn map, if you want. But the key access card right from his frozen dead figure... Fi figures? Fingers. So, uh, that's all good. Now, we will take a picture again, just of the face. I didn't know if you had to, didn't re I didn't know if the first one counted. So just take a picture, close-up picture of his face if you want. Uh, head into the bus for now. We're going to come back through the other side in just a minute. But we're just going to interact with the Geiger counter. Obviously, the whole radiation poisoning and stuffness like thatness. And you get a protective bag as well, um, just for a bit of story stuff. 
And there is an intervention protocol as well, which you can have a look at too. Now, before moving on, so do not move forward just yet. What we're going to do is turn back around, go back through the other side of the bus, which, of course, you're not uh, pooping your pants, even though it's literally dangling off a cliff edge. So you see the gun on the ground. Uh, we can't pick it up, unfortunately, but we can move all the way forward until we see a hell of a gate. The security was more reminiscent of a Korean military base than a mining operation. Now, sometimes the symbol won't actually appear uh, in the top right-hand corner sometimes, so... Um, it's obviously worth doing every time I look at the journal just to make sure that you have got the same stuff that I have here And then we could just hold the a button in order to get straight in we're actually going to be coming up to our first chest right now So we're just going to enter this small building and This is the first chest so there's always a, a whole bunch of random goodies in here for me It's a first aid kit, which is nice and again, like I said as always make sure to have a look on Every shelf and just to have a look all around everywhere so you can pick up some batteries or some spare parts now um, I think that's it. I think yeah, I think that's it So what we're gonna do we're gonna head back to the bus and we're gonna head left Okay, so we're going to head, we are going to head forward, and you can already see straight in front of us is the next herb. That's going to be herb number two out of 20. Now, isn't that nice? Uh, now, in terms of this Geiger counter, really, there's no need for it, apart from, like, one puzzle. Um, sort of about halfway through the game, I don't think. So, well, that's all good for now. So, again, just continue following the path around. Now, you can see a spooky wolf over there, so that's not the way we need to go anyway. This time, if you do have the Geiger counter out, all you got to do then is literally just follow the arrow on where it's pointing you, and we're going to end up in M -M -M Manor's Hamilton's Hotel. Or just Hamilton's Manor. I don't know why. You, the, there is no hotel here. And here we are, and incredibly, the, the gates are not locked, there's no security, although I suppose everyone's kind of frozen to death right now, haven't they? So that's probably why. Uh, we're going to get another achievement here for entering the estates, and let's go ahead and whack us out some diary entries and some collectabepticals. Collector testabepticals. Right, first things first, whip out your camera and interact with the, uh, what did that say? Overuse Aussie. Or something. Something cool about Australians, I suppose, anyway. Uh, and the side of the building as well, where it says, No HMC, assassin! And again, as long as you get the option to keep it, it means that you've done it right. And then again, just have a look. Make sure that you have the same little journey diary entry that I do, the diarrhea entry. Right, let's go straight into the building in front of us now. We're nothing in the bin. Couple of things we can grab in here. First things first, we'll get head to the right and head all the way down. And now we're going to interact with the radio. Basically, keep turning it left until you hear a recording. Si vous entendez ceci, ce message est crucial. Trouvez un endroit où vous mettre à l'abri. Ne sortez qu'en dernier recours. And of course, she's only saying that because you know it's a bit nippy outside. Again, Canadians are just like, bruh, this is warm for us. Eh? So anyway, if you turn to the right there, and on this workbench, there is the first hockey card out of 11. Parabolique. So make sure to pick that up. You can't actually collect it, but just picking it up there will count towards it. And then if we have a look on some shelves, so again, that's hockey card of 1 out of 11 there. Always uh, just check the timestamps as well to be on the safe side. And if you head to the opposite side there, you can grab a couple of spare parts and some batteries. But that's about it. There is a shelf 
as well with a couple of batteries on top again we'll be collecting loads of batteries but again like i said in survival mode it's genuinely pistastical easy so uh head straight and you're going to see like a gazebo directly in front of us that is the old bobo that we're going to go for the old bobo where they haven't had a shower and if you have a look directly in the middle bench, this is where the key of the mansion is. It's hidden. I mean, that's not very well hidden. And why the hell would you hide the key all the way out here? Makes no sense, eh? Zaptamundo. Okay, so we ain't going down there, but we are going to go to the front of the mansion and let ourselves in. Might as well make ourselves at home, huh? So that is what your journal entry, diary entry, diarrhea, whatever it is, uh, should be looking like. And of course, we're going to be grabbing a whole bunch of stuff. So first things first, into the right, into the kitchen. Have a look in the top shelf here. Sometimes they'll have some goodies. Sometimes they won't. Um, and then if we just pop to the opposite side, this is not a collectible. That's just some smashed plates. I would say it's pretty chaos, although this house looks like you could easily heat it up to like 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that hot for Americans? I don't know. I, I forget now. Uh, but anyway, head through into the kitchen after you've uh, collected that, whatever was in the top drawer. Again, there may be some batteries or some spare parts, so it is always worth just having a little look around. But once we come into this little more room, uh, whip out your camera and take a picture of the uh, bloody handprint, which looks, um, well, it doesn't look that bloody good, does it? It looks pretty bloody bad. Okay, and then what we'll do is head in through the next tiny little doors, take a picture of this piece of rubbishness. The mysterious impulse the inhabitants had to escape, or the inexplicable way in which their escape was interrupted. Huh. I had a mysterious impulse once, then that mysterious impulse gave me two kids. Ah. Anyway, now nah, I love my kids. Take a picture of the, what kind of looks like a death painting as well. And uh, yeah, so that should be three diary entries there you got, with all the pictures as well. By the way, yes, I do love my kids very much. They are my world, my everything. They did make me go bald, but that's okay. I was going bald anyway. Right, so uh, what we're going to do is go into this... Door. We're going to turn our flashlight on with the right stick. Again, like I said, there's no human enemies in the game. Um, it's only animals, which obviously we'll come to later on. Make sure to pick up this Canadian coin um, as we need it to operate seven vending machines. And what kind of a hell of a toilet is that? That is just basically some mega splashback on your butt waiting to happen there, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, anyway, out of there, through the double doors here. Oh, in fact, no, not these double doors, sorry. We're going the opposite side, going through the single door. Ah, that's better, a bit of light. Now, first things first, immediately to your right, we're going to interact with and pick up this monkey. Uh, this is the first of four, sorry, jolly old chimp. Oh, hello, jolly chimp. It's basically how the old posh people uh, in England talk to each other. Yeah, jolly chimp. So make sure to pick him up, have a little look. That's one out of four. And then if we go to the right in this big cupboardy cupboard thing right here is the next hockey card. So that's going to be hockey card two out of 11. Happy days. Okay. Once that's done there, I don't think there's any other spare parts. Oh, there's a battery in the next one there. Well, that be all. Okay. So, now we are by the front door. What we're going to do is head to the left through the double doors. Uh, no, we're going through the single doors, sorry. That's right, because we need to go outside first. That's my apologies there. My bad, once again. Um, and that was the thing with this game. When there's so many collectibles in a game, as what we're going to do is just head to the right. We're going to grab our first St. Mary's statue, so hold the A button. And then once outside, head to the right. But in a game where there's so many collectibles... And I've written everything down, and I've made sure that I've, you know, really smashed it out. 
it's still so easy to just, you know, cause especially in this bloody mansion where there's so many doors. Uh, now, you can't actually interact with her, but you just have to look at her. Um, but yeah, so that's why I, it can get a little bit confusing sometimes. So apologies on the upswing anyway. Okay, so heading back through the very right double doors, uh, basically where we came. And what we're going to do is head through the door straight in front of us now. Uh, oh, isn't this nice? Um, now, there's no other collectibles to grab in this area, but there are a few little spare parts and batteries. There's going to be one on this shelf right here. Um, so if you want to have a little look around, that's where we need to go to progress the story. But if you want to just have a little look around, you can for any spare parts and batteries. Uh, otherwise, we will go through the door that we that I just showed. Carl could feel his muscles weakening, his breath wheezing, his body going numb. Damn, bro. Fobel's all of a sudden got on the old acid trip there, hasn't he? So, interact with the batteries there in the drawer, and then go to the uh, through the double doors, and then just head to the right and watch the scene. The walls seemed to be running from Carl's hands as he tried to steady himself. Something was not right. Carl's thoughts were twisting in his head, making him dizzy. <laughs> what kind of creature was dead? Anyway, take a picture once again of the bloody handprint. Looks pretty bloody scary to me, mate. And uh, again, don't worry about the noises for now. Um, nothing bad or nothing spooky is going to happen. So we're all good. Uh, what we're going to do is turn backwards, go into this room where the big old monster boy was. Um, the... Um, uh, <laughs> Forgot what he's called now, sorry, uh, but we'll figure that out later on. Uh, Beginning to interact with a cup of tea, doesn't actually make a difference. Um, just having a little look, making sure there's any spare parts and any batteries. There was a battery there, and that was pretty much about it. So we can head through the old bloody handprint door now into the. Oh, now this is what you want in a mansion, just a bar. Uh, so head to the right, spooky karaoke will start playing. Have a look in this door on the right again. You should, you may be able to find a couple of spare parts and some batteries. Um, like I said, it's always worth picking up just for the couple of achievements. Otherwise, we can just continue going straight forward. And this is a neat little puzzle. Uh, it's easy enough, basically. Carl knew if you want to skip ahead, you know, 30 seconds to a minute or so to see the end product, that's fine. But we're basically just getting the United States of America all up on our front face grill. And by the United States of America, of course, what I actually meant was the Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, Mexicans, please forgive me for my ignorant, selfish ways. I am... Um, it was only a little bit of America there, somewhere. Uh, anyway, uh, you can interact with the letter, mostly uh, interact with the key. Oh, yes. This is one hell of a mystery. So... Uh, what we will do now, again, just have a look at the journal just to make sure that that page is looking as full as mine. To the right, you can see a book. Again, you can, you can pick up things, but they don't actually do a thing. So uh, just like books and things like that, they don't mean anything. So head straight forward through the double doors into this next room. And then if we have a look on the left-hand side, you can 
interact with the drawer there in order to pick up some batteries. Most importantly, a little bit further down in this drawer is the next Canadian coin. I mean, you need at least seven. Now, there are more than seven in the game, but we do need at least seven. And in order to just get through this bit, we'll have a look at the stone. <clears throat> Sorry, I was uh, getting a bit... At the stone. And you can have a look with the window, but I don't think it actually makes a difference in terms of diary entries or anything. So once you have that diary or entry, and like I said, obviously, because we're still technically in the cold, keep looking out for your flame meter. Because uh, obviously, the the more that goes down, the quicker that drops, the quicker you're going to die, son. And if you haven't saved for a while, well, that is bad news. So back through the double doors with the, not the globe, we're going to the single door on the left. There we go. Spooky little bear. Duh. Again, keep your flashlight on, that's all good. And then what you need to do is just follow the steamy door, which of course you would in real life. Huh? Their way in front of him. He doesn't know which way he came from or the way he's going. Everything seems to be going in a circle, a spiral carrying him. Carl suddenly feels like he's waking up, but inside the dream. So, welcome to the dreams. Now, personally, if this was a dream of mine, it wouldn't be a dream in the freezing damn cold. Uh, now, this is a very easy puzzle. Basically, all you've got to do is push each statue until a green line appears underneath them. That will tell you that you have done it right as soon as that green line appears. Just uh, keep pushing all four until all four green line appears, like so. Clouded after an afternoon nap. The detective had no idea how it worked, but the stones seemed to slide on the rails smoothly as soon as the totem pole was rotated. He did not know how or why, but Carl said... And then once that's done, we're going to head into the cabin where the green lines are pointing us. You can interact with some things if you like, but basically we're just going to jump straight down the hole and get out of the dream sequence and grab another achievement as well for getting out of said dream sequence. But you know, you got to watch out for Spooky Moose Man. Oh, in just a minute. Uh, now, these are another bunch of collectibles we're going to be grabbing called the Mr. Knight Fragments. Now, the more we progress in the game, every time we get close to some of these fragments, the broom animals will appear, and you will basically just have to shoot them dead. Again, it's not too difficult, but uh, just a pre-forewarning is. The pulse of the stone invaded Carl's mind, and he felt a strange, dark presence take shape near him. <laughs> Zebra? Zebra? That wasn't so scary, was it? Just a big demon moose thing. Just decided to slash your face in. That's all, uh, that always happens. Plenty of those about on a Saturday night in your hometown, I expect. So, there should be the diary or journal entries for you anyway. Um, so now we're going to start to explore more of the mansion. There is a door, which for some reason I'm having mega troubling spotting. Uh, so get through this door. Now, this is where we're actually going to encounter our first broom animal in just a little bit. Um, so for now, head into this uh, sort of left room. Uh, you can have a look at the drawer. There's nothing in that one, though, which is a shame. Through the door, which is not locked, but it's the other door that we're looking for. There it is, the open door. Yep. So go ahead, pick up some logs. Again, if you haven't saved your game in a while, this is what we're doing right now. Because the last thing you want is to die unexpectedly and then have to start from a while ago. Which is exactly what I did the first time I matched it up. So going straight here to the right. And again, the game is saved. Also, you can make a manual save if you press the A button again on the log, wherever you've put it. Um, press the A button again and you'll get nine manual save slots you can use as well. So 
pick up the batteries, pick up the valve wheel, because uh, we're going to need to valve our way through this, and whatever else you can find on the bench as well, of course. Uh, just checking if there's any more weapons, which there are not, so don't worry about that as well. Um, now, if you find that you're... Uh, we're not going to be able to go that way, so head to the right. But if you are finding that your flashlight is looking a bit dim, you can press the X button to replace the battery. Um, so from here then, we will go straight into the toolbox. Have a look what's in here. Nice, another revolver. That'll come in handy. Go to the right through this little chain link fence right again. And press the A button and that'll get that going. Now this is where we're going to see the first broom animal. Like I said, we can kill broom animals, and a lot of the time, even on survival mode, it's it's kind of easy just to do it with the hatchet if you want to save some batteries. But as we turn around, straight there it is then. Now, because people had said about the uh, animal lover achievement glitching, and um, basically one of the true achievements um, commenters basically said that he just didn't interact with anything at all, so we're heading to the right, going through the door, and that will... Leave that broom animal alone. Uh, but basically, he said that he didn't interact with any animal or broom animal, and that achievement unlocked. But I think it is absolutely fine now, because I ended up killing all the broom animals after this, and the achievement unlocked just fine. So, uh, apologies there if that was a bit fast. But once you have gotten up these stairs, interact with the old dead woman who... I mean, to be fair, that's a, that looks like a pretty cozy way to go. Apart from obviously all the blood and death and guts around her. So interact with absolutely everything on her and then take a picture of her cold, dead corpsenesses. What had happened here was not caused by a man. And we are going to find Frozen Body number two in just a hot, quick second. To the left through the double doors, and you can see that we are back in the main foyer entrance. I say back in the main foyer entrance, we haven't actually been here yet. But we're going to be coming back and forth. But uh, once we head up the stairs, you can see a whole bunch of frozen icicle stuff. So head into the left, and there it is. Frozen Body number two out of six. So you get a couple of diarrhea entries as well. And if you're wondering what that noise is, that's another broom animal. So again, like I said, it's worth either using your revolver or hatchet to kill the broom animal. So it's uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for you and you're not getting bitten on the butt snatch, of course. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, that literally looks like he's just about to make a crucial save for at, and the, at the 95th minute to stop the, uh, his football opponents from scoring there. Uh, that's, a he again, a hell of a pose and a hell of a way to die. But take a picture. Make sure to keep it as well. It'd just be like uh, Jordan Pickford playing against, uh, you know, probably easy teams because England only play well against easy teams, don't they? <laughs> and Wales aren't even in the Euros at all. So never mind. Right. So what we're going to do now is we will head... Uh, just having a little look if there's any more spare parts and any batteries, but if we go up to the left Once we get through this door, this is where the broom animal will appear uh, But we're going to be grabbing another couple of those Canadian coins So I've replaced the battery just in case that's happening and it's going to appear right here again Like I said kill it. It just makes it a lot easier instead of running around But otherwise we're going to head through the open door here. The Canadian coin is in the drawer on the right Ouch, that hurt, you stupid douchebag. So I did collect that. Then we're going to go all the way around. And like I said, we're going to be grabbing another Canadian coin. Ah, my ass. So go back into the right where the frozen guy is. Straight through to the left in the double doors. And uh, this is where we're going to get the next Canad Canadian coin. And there it is. So that should be your fourth one already. And like I said, there's plenty more than seven anyway. So, nay, panicking, bothering yourself. <clears throat> and this is actually the point where I thought, you know what? Screw this! I'm not running away! I'm a man! And I will shoot ghost animals! Scarily. Spookily. Uh, now, nah, not in this room, but once we do head in this room, 
Again, there's a couple of things we need to be grabbing, especially the room key. It had become only a shadow of what it once was. Oh, man, what a jip. Nothing in that chest. How dare you? Okay, head to the through the double doors on the straight ahead of you, because, again, for some reason, we can't go through it there. By the way, if you want to jump, it is the R1 button, or the RB button, sorry. Um, in fact, no, we're going straight back, straight back past Frozen Bro. And we are going to head to the room we're, uh, in the globe room, which we couldn't get to before. Now there's going to be... Potentially two of these broom animals whether There's only two because I didn't kill the one but make sure to kill these broskies dead and my aiming is just Atrocious. This is definitely like a 3 a.m. P where Your aim is literally all over the floor Yeah, when in doubt Hatched it out, boys and girls. Right, oh, so what we'll do then is we're going to head through this room where we're going to use the key. Um, it was just off to the right of where we were just fighting the broom wolves. Um, and it's going to be a bit of a long scene we're going to watch here. Work and you'll finally have your very own projection room, my dear. Aren't you going to say anything? There's Whatever do you mean? That room. It's not for me. Nothing has ever been. Come now, don't speak nonsense. You know I love you. As much as you love Cynthia? Who? I know about her, William. And I'm too weary to care. About anything. You're off your rocker. There is no Cynthia. Never mind, it doesn't matter. And so finally, when the scene is over, now we can actually head through the door. Um, there is nothing that's going to appear, so don't worry, but I am just checking, seeing if there's any batteries and everything. Have a look in the room on the right. This is where we're going to get the second St. Mary statue as well. Uh, but there is a chest we're going to interact with as well. That's another diary of... Emily Le Brun. Ooh, ooh, boon, boon, boon. Jump in, boon, boon, boon. Anybody listen to Electric Callboy and Baby Metal Song? Ratatata. Yes, it is fantastic. Uh, anyway, here is the second uh, Mary statue, Saint Statue Mary. And then, of course, what we'll do is have a look in the entirety of the room just to see if there is any um, uh, spare parts or batteries. Right, once we have ransacked the room and we've saved the game as well, now we can just head on. So pop your flashlight on again, take a right. Uh, have a look in the drawer here on the left for another Canadian coin. So that should be already like, what, your fourth or fifth, whichever one it is. Grab this weird, freaky looking Winston Churchill baby and then head down, go to the right and then just drop it in this big elevator hidey hole. You know, one of those, what were they called? Things where you bring the food up, the old scabinators. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, so once you have done that, we are going to not head into the room on the right, because we've already done that, but we're going to head to the right and through 
no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, no, nothing. So straight through into this room. And basically, all we're doing is going a long, long, long way up. So just at the top of here, uh, what we're going to do is climb the ladder. I think there's a couple of spare parts and some batteries lying around. Um, to progress the story, we have to go down one stair, uh, one flight of stairs. But again, just grabbing some spare parts, as is the huge. So down the second flight of stairs, sorry, through this door, pop on your light and there is going to be another broom animal in this area just as we turn the corner. So again, get your hatchet or your revolver ready. It's going to come straight in front of us now. Yeah! Charge it! Now we're going to find our first snow globe. So from where we were, head to the left and through to the left again. Left, left as much as you can. Uh, again, obviously picking up any items that you can. Through this little narrow hallway to the left and you can find the first out of four snow globes. There's one in each level and you'll get an achievement for collecting each one. So a mansion in the snow. I would take a mansion in anything right now in all fairness. Um, so what we're going to do then, again, we'll have a little look around this, um, obviously always worth picking up some ammunition as well, uh, but that's about it in this area, so we're just going to follow the path around in order to get through the door. I'm joking. Luckily, this isn't one of those games where the mannequins uh, appear and chase you. I'm looking at you, condemned creepy-ass game. Which was awesome, by the way. Um, so again, just I obviously have just having a little look around, seeing if we can find anything. There is a first aid kit and a chest right there, if you are needing. Uh, otherwise, there is just one singular door that we can just nip through. And it's going to be right here. No, no, just just mannequins which stay mannequin-y. Uh, so, what are we going to do? Get a camera out. We're going to take a picture of the next deadness of bodiness. And then again, just interact with the body, um, grabbing a few things of what you can. And if you have a look on the window sills and have a look all around this room, again, some more spare parts and batteries for you to grabs. It was always harder when you could put a name to them. Carl deduced that this poor man must be Charles, Hamilton's servant.
Okay, there we go. So we're done with this room. Let's head through the next door. And then we're going to take a left just after we grab this battery here. So again, you know, we've been looking around. I'm already up to 17 batteries through the next single door. And we're going to see a whole lot of... Oh, I wonder what white stuff this is. Again, drug lords, don't get too excited. This is nothing. So we're going to take two different pictures here. The first one is sort of a far away picture if, of sorts. And you can tell when you can you can tell when you're supposed to take the picture right is where the frame changes color to a nice light green a la green. So again, just check that your diarrhea journey entral journal entry is all good, the same as mine. And then interact with this bit a lot closer. An impossible creature had taken over the manor. And finally, once we drop down, there is going to be a key, the office key, which we have not had. Even though, you know, there's nobody here, so you could have literally just broken the door down, but that's okay. So, out through the right-hand side door, and you can see which room we're back in. The living room room, uh, I think. Uh, anyway, grab the log and pop it in the fire in order to make a automatic save. Again, press the A button again if you want to make a manual save. And you can see that at the minute then, we're on the second floor. Right, so from here, what we're going to do, we'll take a left through this door. Again, you have to hold the A button there in order to just nip it straight through. And, oh, what we've got there, something delicious on the left, just some ammo. Tattle too nicely. Take a look around and grab this uh, next diary. Again, that's why we're collecting all the diaries as well for our own diary journal entries. Uh, turn to the right, go through the next singular door, and we're back into the globe room. Only this time we can actually walk all the way down the stairs, which we couldn't get up before for some particular reason. So once we head out of these double doors, if you take the next left, this is the office key, which we can finally get in. And we've got a whole bunch of other stuff to grab here as well. A uh, little note... Talking about ruined keys and suchies. Um, but for now, again, if we have a look there just at the floor, you can see then that we have a, another full page of diary entries. Something has been moved. It's that big moose monster. Uh, but anyway, have a look at the uh, shelf there. Uh, the uh, death drawer, sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. There was a will in there. And there's a list of phone numbers. Again, a lot of these are just purely for story rather than anything else. Uh, but head through this next door here. And then what we're going to find is the next gun. Immediately on our left, hold, uh, press the A button, then the B button. And that'll be another weapon to add to the inventory. Okay, so we can't actually get down there, which is just an unfortunate shame, isn't it? Now, uh, what we're doing is actually we need to go back down into the basement where the flooded water and the first broom animal was. Um, so I do apologize as we head straight in front of us now. Um, this is, we are back in the, so basically in the previous room we came out of, go straight and we end up in the main foyer. And again, we are looking for... Now, for whatever reason, this bit confused the crap out of me, just trying to find where the uh, basement is. Yeah. Yeah. I do apologise. This was a little bit of a pain to find. Um, but, like I said, that is what we're looking for, is the basement. We need to go and get the ruined keys, or the new keys. Oh my god, Mike, we bloody found it! There it was on the map, just in case you were needing to know. Stupid basement, and it? Stupid, stupid. Anyway, uh, there is no broom animal in here. Don't worry about that. So we killed the first two from earlier on. Um, so what we will do, again, there can still be a few batteries and spare parts we may have missed earlier. This is obviously where we put the log into the fire. If you head to the left of that and go all the way at the back, 
To the left, you can see where we dropped that big William Churchill weird baby statue. You grab the keys and we're going to head all the way back up to the office. Right, so here we are. Once we pop the keys on, what we need to do is type out the name Cynthia. So that's C-Y-N-T-H-I-A. So synthetic Cynthia. And oh, would you look at that? A weird... Th that's a hell of a door that's just randomly opened. Incredible uh, bit of secrecy right there. So... Obviously, that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow it round and follow it down. Follow it proud and follow it brown. So, uh, first things first, have a look in the drawer here on the right. We find a little ammo box. There is another couple of diary entries we're going to grab. The first one here is the business agreement. And then if we head to the left, there is another piece of uh, classified documents. So that's another one that we're going to find. Uh, so we're not actually going to go back up the same way we came uh, have a look at the underneath of the desk straight to the desk drawer to find another secret key damn this bro had a lot of secrets in his keys uh, otherwise we can just head through the door the opposite side of the entrance that we came in and aha ta-da we are back in the basement dentios so let's just check our journal make sure we're on the same pages So go ahead, turn around once you've uh, double-checked everything there and that we should be all good. So turn around, back out through the door into the floodedness partners of the El Basmentio. Uh, now I'm going to whap a hatchet out. Um, there is going to be another broom animal. Uh, again, replace the battery there. It's always worth just replacing the battery. There's going to be another broom animal here as we appear out of here. So give that a little slice to the face. Someone is seriously injured. All of their blood rushes to their vital organs. Carl knew he had reached this point. Even more seriously. <laughs> you dead. Okay, so now we're going to head to the left. And if we take a right, just underneath this little sort of secrecy bit, we're going to head in through here using the secret key. And it's a hell of a lab. So again, a couple more diary entries. And we're actually going to get our next... Mr. Knight, uh, Mr. Knight fragment as well. So the first things first, have a look at Jules de Mail's notes. That's another diary entry there, just for chilling. And have a look at the chest there. There should be another first aid kit. Plenty about, even on survival mode. And then if we have a look there, you can clearly see uh, right behind us now. Well, we're going to take a picture of the chalkboard, uh, chalkboard first. And then if we turn around, we can then grab the second Mr. Knight fragment. Although, again, luckily this time there are no, like, four or five wolves coming to try and uh, kill us. Or if they want to play for Wolverhampton Wanderers, apparently you've just got to be Portuguese, and that's all good. So, before moving straight on, have a look and find the next hockey card as well. That should be number three out of 11. And then when we get into the next room, it should uh, we should listen to the radio, which would be our final journal entry, which would be 33 out of 33. Um, uh, we just got to get through this little narrow hallway and then we will be out of the manor. Hooroo. Si vous entendez ceci, ce message est crucial. Trouvez... And again, just choose the top dialogue option every time. Enfin, vous m'entendez? Carl Faubert, oui, je vais te demander quelque chose. 
très curieuse d'entendre ce que vous avez à dire. Si vous le pouvez, venez me rejoindre. On a établi un retour au nord avec d'autres survivants. Longez la bordure est du lac Leach jusqu'à ce que vous voyez un quai près d'une tour en bois. Le refuge est proche. And providing you've followed along with everything, you should then get the Carl Journey achievement of the uh, Hamilton Man Mansion, Hamilton Manor, whatever you want to call it. So that should be that. Let's go ahead, save the game, grab some logs, pop it in. And yes, everyone else talks French even more than their own snaily baguettes. Sorry, that was quite a prejudiced thing there. Of course, the French people don't just eat snails and baguettes. They have a wide variety of wine and cheese. Sorry, that was another prejudiced thing there, wasn't it? My, my bad, my apologies. Right, before heading out, grab the gas can. We are going to get the hell out of the Hamilton mansion and we're going to take a boat. There is going to be a wolf um, on our right. Again, there's nothing else to collect now, but there will be a wolf in this area, so don't worry about him. On easy mode, they pretty much just all run away all the time, but they can actually uh, still attack you on survival mode. But, again, remember, we're not killing any real-life animal. So if that's the case, either get your gun out and shoot at the snow, try and take a picture of the wolf or whatever animals, that scares them away as well, or just completely run away. Uh, interact with the boat to put the gas in, and get the hell on out of here, boys! As he drove away from the mansion, Carl pondered the strange discoveries he had made there. The Hamilton Mining Corporation's true activities were shrouded in mystery. However, before he could uncover it, Carl had to reach the survivors at their Leech Lake shelter. So, welcome to the Lakeness of Leeches. Now, these are basically a couple of islands that we're going to be traveling to and obviously grabbing a whole bunch of collectibles and everything on the way. It's the first journal entry out of 11 for this one. As we continue heading all the way straight until you see the cabin up ahead, get inside and you're going to unlock the Love Shack. Baby Love Shack. Oh, no, wait. Uh, but you will actually grab the Love Cabin Achievement and Trophy here. Once we enter, for some reason, I'm having incredible trouble doing that. Uh, so there we go. Nice. Nice little rarity popping off there. So again, have a look in all cupboards and everything uh, in order to grab these spare parts and uh, revolvers and batteries and everything. Make a save here. Plus, the main important thing is grab the shotgun right at the top of where we are standing now for... The next um, weapon for our collection. So, once you think you are done and destado, we are going to go ahead and we're going to go to the back of this cabin. There's basically a, another herb and another chest. So, it should be chest 2 out of 10 and the third herb out of 20. Now, from the back of the cabin, I do believe it is more to the right-hand side. So, let's head down. Again, just as we came from the back of the log cabin or the love cabin... There is the third herb, and then a little bit further down is the second out of ten parachute chests. And 
That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, that is all there is on this island. So what we can do is actually, if you have a look at the map, just uh, put, your, put your pointer down to where the anchor is. We're going to get back on that boat in the freezing chilliness. And again, obviously, always be on the lookout. Make sure to have a look at your flame icon. Make sure that it is not going down too fast. If it is, or you feel like you could just do with a little top up, get back in the love cabin and uh, warm up your cockles. So obviously the more locations that we unlock, the more we can fast travel to, if you so wish. So what we need to do is basically head straight here, and then in just a few seconds we need to go to the left. And you can tell when we're on the right path, because we're about to go under a bridge archway. So again, that should be coming up on your left, uh, right about now-ish. At the sight of the peaceful lake, Carl Faubert remembered the embrace of the icy water, its millions of tiny needles cutting into his skin. He was in no hurry to return. A pier and a wooden tower, just as Carl had heard on the radio. The shelter must be... I mean, I did say it was ish, didn't I? It wasn't exactly now, it was ish. Anyway, there's the uh, diary entry, so now we're all good. Uh, right, so what we'll do is head out of here again. Always be on the lookout for some animals. There is a save campfire log pit directly in front of us if you want to do that. Uh, but have a look to the left, and we're going to go inside this building. Uh, we can actually, if you want, there's a couple of goodies up here. So if you want to use 10 of your spare parts, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Now, basically, in just a minute, we're going to be coming up to an old abandoned house where the French girl who we were speaking to on the radio, Francois, is. And then eventually we have to come back with a whole bunch of spare parts and basically fix up the house. Plus, that's how we get the next St. Mary statue. But we won't have enough to do it just yet, even if you decide not to use all of the spare parts to fix the ladder and grab the items up top. But once you have grabbed said items up top, let us head back down. Let's go inside this time. And again, there's going to be another couple of things for us to stick it stick in our pocket with a sun don't shine including hockey card number four so that should be hockey card number four so make sure that you do have that again obviously if you do miss anything at all um obviously just make sure that you're doing the sort of manual save points and everything and then you can come back to a, an older save and grab whatever it is that you're missing so take a left from where we were just standing or coming out of that building you could just see the water on the left and a big stone uh, right in front of us there is a wolf on the right again remember do not kill any of the live animals and that's not a wolf that's like a it's like one of those uh, oh it was a wolf god what the hell i thought it was a rat go away douchebag i mean you no harm so yeah if uh, one wolf does start coming to sniff over Give the snow a little shoot, and then uh, he should eventually bagger off. But over onto the right here is the next herb. This is number herb 4 out of 20. So once you've done that, turn back around. We're actually going to be going for herb number 5 out of 20 now. So uh, straight in front of us, you can see the environment. 
a um, couple of trees and rocks and everything. But just continue going straight forward. And then eventually right in the distance there. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Aha! I knew I would find you. Anyway, that is um, herb number five. Should be herb number five out of 20 for you. Right, so what we're actually going to do now, uh, we're basically just going to go ahead and follow the path. It's a pretty linear path. But eventually we will see a campfire and then the boss. Well, it's not really a boss, but it's that Wendingo. Uh, the death moose is going to start chasing towards us. And there, there isn't a cha there's a chance to get a an achievement out of him. So for now, just uh, follow the path along. Out of all of the animals in Quebec's fauna, the wolf was perhaps Carl Faubert's favorite. Its nobility and beauty were matched only by its ferocity and intelligence. And the thing about this game as well is, I mean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bloody beautiful game. But that's why you're always um, seeing me check my maps just to make sure that we are on the same path. Highly advise that you do that because it, it can be easy to get lost. So, once you have warmed up your cockles, you've um, automatically saved. What we're going to do now, we're going to take a right. We're going to go up here and then the death, uh, moose death man or death moose, whatever it is, is going to start uh, chasing us. What we need to do for the not very effective achievement is basically shoot at him 10 times. So make sure to just shoot at him 10 times. And when the achievement unlocks, just turn directly around and make a break for it until the narrator says, Oh, he's gone. Thank God. The detective could not defeat the creature on his own. It was best to run away. Detective sensed he had lost the creature, but for how long? To be honest, a Wendingo just sounds like the new uh, line of Renault cars, doesn't it, really? The Renault Wendingo. Anyway, um, so we're going to go basically back on ourselves. And again, there is a reason for that. We're going to be grabbing the next herb. So don't go the way that we were shooting the Wendingo. We're heading all the way to this area. Take a right around, and there's going to be the Herb 6 just next to the snowed under Homer Simpson Mr. Burns cabin. And then once we've got that, then there is literally only one thing to do. Now, when we're outside, uh, this is really where the sort of big stretches, as we look at the map, that's where we're heading. The sort of big stretches of um, just running and running and running in the freezing cold take place. But there you go, I've marked where we're going on the map. It's basically until we get up to the old abandoned Huizen. The sight of this hovel had an unforeseen effect on Fobe. The idea of finding after so long. Oh, lovely jabbly. Now, this is where all the uh, French, the old uh, French bags are staying. 
Yes, I am. Good guys got go for me out. So, lick them. Right, so again, you can talk to people if you so wish. Um, obviously, we're not going to bother because we can't understand them anyway. But go ahead and speak to Francois. Hello, Francois. Jibalu balu. Um, now, again, you can go through all the dialogue options if you want, or you can just click buy. Now, if there is a bit of information that you still need out of someone, um, the narrator will be like, oh, wouldn't it be a good idea to speak to them again? Okay. <laughs> I guess so. Ça pourrait aller mieux. J'essaie de rassembler autant de civils que possible, c'est la priorité. Ensuite, je vais m'occuper des ressources. Si vous voulez vous rendre utile, tentez de rendre la maison opérationnelle. Jules Demers. Vous avez entendu parler de lui? C'est un scientifique qui travaillait pour Hamilton. Il est toujours en vie. Vous pouvez le trouver au nord-ouest d'ici, près des mines. Il étudie l'anomalie de la tempête. Si vous tenez à le rencontrer, je vous conseille de trouver de l'équipement d'escalade. C'est la seule façon de se rendre sans carte d'accès. Et puis, Carl? So it's at this point then we can actually say goodbye. You can interact with Francois and, you know, get some more information, but uh, eh, we don't want to. Right, so what we could do as we take another picture here of Francois for our diary entry. There you go, lovely. How wonderful. Uh, now it is at this point where we basically won't have enough spare parts to fix everything, which means we won't have enough spare parts to, uh, you can pick up the first aid kit by the way, to go upstairs. So basically you have to fix everything in the house with all the spare parts and then the guy at the top of the stairs moves and that is where the figure of Mary is. But we don't have enough yet, so we'll have to come back to this a little bit later on. In fact, I come back to this lastly, very much lastly later on. That's a great looking fridge with nothing in it. Cool, guess we'll fix the power. So we can go ahead and we can fix the sink here. Um, again, we will, I think, only have enough parts to fix that sink. Unless you manage to um, go really out of your way and find a whole bunch. Otherwise, what we'll do, we can head out and we have to fix up these two windows as well after we grab some boards around the side of the house. But again, we will not have nearly enough spare parts. So this is one. I think we need 10, 25. I think we need about 35. Yeah. So another 35. So you can go ahead, get 35, come back and grab this if you want. Um, but again, you could just fast travel here at any point. So nay panicky, nay bothers. So what we're going to do then, since we can't go upstairs for the time being, we're actually going to head once again back out of the front door. There are some logs in here and you can chuck it in your old campfire if you want to do some saving. Yep, there's douchebag. I mean, he's not a douchebag for unpacking, is he? But uh, go out the front door, head to the right, and in the distance you're going to see what looks like a little tunnel and a little building on the right. We're going to head for that building on the right first of all. And in here then, if we turn around, it's literally by the door as you enter. There we go. Uh, there's a couple of spare parts and a battery. Then we're going to head for this tunnel looking thing. And then we're going to speak to... Um, 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 a little French teenager girl. I forget her name for a minute. Anyway, you will have to go through most of the dialogue on this one. In order for her to give us some snacks for her dogs that we've got to find. Isn't that just nice? Bye. Faubert had a hunch that this little girl could help him. There may be more they needed to discuss. Ça va? J'ai eu un petit accident. Le traîneau a foncé dans un arbre puis je me suis mordu la langue. Il faut que je répare le train. Quand ce sera fini, si vous voulez, je vous le prête. Il faudrait retrouver mes chiens, par exemple. Je les ai laissés libres, puis je crois qu'ils en ont profité pour explorer les alentours. Si vous voulez qu'ils vous écoutent, donnez-leur ça. C'est des oreilles de porc. Attention, il faut pas en donner trop. Je veux pas que vous me rameniez des bébés gâtés. Oh, that's right. Dry pig ears for the win. Yes. Delicious. Right, so there is still... So basically now we have to find six dogs. 
Um, we know one of them's at the house. Basically, if you get close enough to one, um, it'll appear on the icon. So there we go. It'll appear as a little paw icon on the map. So you'll know where it is. Um, but we're just going to head directly to the right. And here is the first one. Just interact with El Doggo to get the first one out of here. And just like that, it disappears into thin air. Dun dun dun, it's a ghost dog. No, nope, we're all good. So head forward and you can see this little bit of camp. Of course, we're going to light this boy up. Get us some nice warmth, grab the spare parts off the box. And then we're going to go and look for dog number two plus chest number three in this area as well. So head to the right and go down the hill. And then if you continue going, you can already see the chest directly in front of us. There it is. So grab that, that should be number 3 out of 10. Oh, I'm the dog as well! <laughs> what a win! Now, there are no other collectibles in this area, uh, so it's literally just a case of now uh, we're going to head to the bottom, towards the bottom end of this map eventually, and then we're going to find the rest of the dogs. Um, again, no collectibles to worry about, so we're just going to find, go ahead and find the four remaining dogs. The three of them are at the bottom side of this map, and the uh, fourth one is obviously right by the house, so I think we're going to go... Back to the house first, get rid of that dog, and then head straight back down in order to whap out the other dogs. Not whap them out, but you know what I mean. I'll stop talking now. Now there are a couple of wolves here that we are going to need to not kill, remember, so that's why I've got my camera out. Uh, if you take a picture of them before they start growling at you, they should eventually run away. If not, try and shoot, like I said, try and shoot your gun at the snow. Um, and then either way, it's going to run away and there's doggy number 4 -0.
Carl Faubert became pensive in front of the now assembled pack. The genealogy of these dogs could lead us back to time immemorial. Throughout the millennia. So with all the dogs found, we can head back to um, the mini French teenage girl. I'll just call her mini baguette for now uh, until I remember her name. And then she's going to allow us the dog sled for the rest of the game. So that's always nice. And I have been criticised in the past for not using my map enough, so hopefully this is some good use of the map this time. Woohoo! Thank you, Mini Baguette. Much appreciado. Okay, first thing we're going to do first is pet every single one of these beautiful good boys in order to get a, another achievement. So pet all six and then get on the back and let's go sledding. So there we go, we get the Ace Ventura Pet Detective achievement, and then we can head on. So as you can see, you can press up to fast travel to places, um, left stick up to move, and of course if you want to stop, uh, put the left stick down. Uh, immediately what we're going to do is actually stop by these piles of rocks on the right. Now there's a couple of spare parts and batteries, um, but more importantly where that tyre is that you can see sort of half buried in the snow, just up from that is the second out of four jolly chimp bags. Uh, so again, just where the tire was, just head up a little bit more to find the second out of four jolly chimps. As you can see, I had absolutely no trouble in figuring that out at all. Um, almost lost my cool there. So a lot of this part of the map, I will just be marking out locations and we're just going to be heading for a whole bunch of collectibles. So the next one is actually going to be uh, chest number four now, I believe. So again, a lot of this will just be putting a marker on the map and then following the way. Oh. 
So let's stop it then, right by the Logs of Life. Whoa, get off with the B button of course, and then head through this gap with the dogs. Cannot go, because you know, spiky bushes and spiky boys and stuff. And we are just going to continue heading down. There are no animals, I believe, in this bit, so we's all good. Sticking with the right hand path, and then eventually, it's cold out here. Hurry up. Oh, in fact, there is one animal. Now, again, this is another one where you could either try to take a picture or shoot the ground next to the moose. I decided to do neither, and it starts attacking me. So, Every time he's uh, small, you know, Carl just be careful. Surprise. Just <laughs> try and get him out of your way. But again, do not kill this one. And then just behind is the next chest. Run, 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 run away before you get smashed in the A. That's what we don't want. Right, before we leave, thank God, we need to grab the next herb as well, which is this, in this exact same area. Um, again, if you get close enough to a herb, it will uh, pop up on your map as a little white dot. You can screw off, you big moose. You big douche moose. Uh, so if we just go uh, sort of in the middle of this area, you can see the campfire. So we'll pop that log on and then directly to the right of it here, I believe. Look directly to the uh, straight on of it and slightly left. In fact, directly to the left of it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. There is the next herb anyway. So yeah. So from where the campfire was directly to your left and that's job done and that is it for this area so now we can head back to our dogs and go sledding again again try not to get smashed in the a by the old douche moose So we're just going to stop right around here, just next to these trees and these big jagged pile of rocks again. Now we're coming up to our third Mr. Knight fragment, but this time we're going to need to get our weapons out. Now from now on, every time you go near one of these Mr. Knight fragments, a couple of broom animals will appear. This time I think it's about three wolves. So you can either just quickly run, grab the fragment out of the ground and run back, or you can shoot them, hatchet them, whatever you want to do to them. Just make sure they taste good. Uh, I'm just joking, vegans. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. But anyway, there is the fragment. So we're going to drop down. We'll grab that one, and then the broom animals will appear. So you, again, either shoot or run past. Anyway, get your A's back to the digs. Hi. 
And now we can simply head forward and head into the Ville of Horrid Henry. Yes, it is Henryville. So first things first, we're actually going to continue onwards until we see a big old like watchtower and up the watchtower is where we're going to find our third frozen body out of six. So there it is, so simply get off at this point and then we're going to go climb up the ladder and just interact with the frozen body for number three out of six. Unlucky Maka. Before freezing to death, this man had tried to carve a shape with his knife. What had he been trying to say? It was an animal, possibly a moose. Was it a warning for danger? If so, what was it? I mean, in all fairness, he did look a little bit uh, chilly right there, didn't he? But, you know, I mean, this is literally no different, by the way. I, I go on about uh, living in Canada. This is basically the extreme north of Scotland, 24-7. Um, even on its sunniest days, it's still about minus 20 degrees, I think, right? Northern, northern Scottish bras? Yes. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and grab herb 8 out of 20 now so again it's a little bit behind us and it's going to be just to the right as we turn around just past one of these houses in the nicely lighten garden back area <laughs> So this time we're going to go past the watchtower and then immediately what we're going to do is find the third uh, figure of Mary, the old Saint Mary Nost. So we're going to take a left here, uh, no in fact we're not going to take a left, what we're going to do is, now obviously we need to get over this pile of crap, um, and even jumping for some reason doesn't help us get over the pile of Krudsky, so we're going to have to go in between the houses. Here we go. Jeez. Oh, okay, there we go. And there's no spare parts or anything like that, so we can just go through the gate. We'll take a right and then a left through this little open way. And then there's going to be another gap on the right-hand side of where we are now. So we're just going to sneak through there. Not there, but behind us. Ah, 
there we go. Nicely squeezed, bruv. Right, head through the left uh, side of the gap here. Nipping through all of the houses. Again, I really don't know why Mr. Faubert can't just jump over these things, but there we go. Such is life. And then we're out into the open. So, uh, first things first, like I said, straight in front of us, where this pumpkin and Halloween decorations are in the snow, is the third, for us, figure of St. Mary. So that's job done. And then to the right, just past the next watchtower, is going to be the next Mr. Knight fragment. So just past the watchtower now, right in front of us, get get your something out, whatever it is you want to shoot with, and be ready for another three wolf fight or so. Cheesy, Bo Beasy. It's all job done. Okay, right. Now, there's only really one sort of a linear path to go. So um, that's where we're going to go. And we're going to follow the path, like I said, until we get to the general storiness. Or general store, for short. Now, I don't know if this was patched out, but there used to be a frozen body right next to this big old dump truck lorry thing right here. Um, it appears to be, I don't know if it was just bugged out for me or whether they took him out or whatever, but apparently there was, and in my game at least, there was no frozen body there. The only frozen body that we can find is if we look to the left and down that little gap... Um, that is where the, it's a story related frozen body anyway, but that will be four out of six. But like I said, there used to be at least a body next to that big old lorry dump truck where there is absolutely not now. So if there is, that's great. Make sure to interact with him. If not, then, uh, well, we'll just simply move on. So, as I said then, we will, if we have a look down the left, this is where we can see a frozen body. Now, the journal entry, which I uh, looked at earlier, was actually for this part right here, where you see the Wendingo monster throw this guy off the cliff. Uh, but interact with all of him, and we will take a picture of him as well, and that'll count for frozen body four out of six. And yeah. So, as you can see by the flame and the icicles around the screen, it's getting a bit chilly on the old willy right here. So, let's head straight into the general store. There's going to be some logs at the back of the store, which we can then put in the uh, fire. And, you know, warm our cockles up. Lovely. So, there are be some logs. Chuck it in. The uh, old forebear is getting a bit frozen. <laughs> forebear frozen. Yeah, anyway. Tips of his fingers and his nose. Right, a couple of achievements and things we're going to grab here. First thing, get out your hatchet, interact with this vinyl player. I know, uh, and kids are going to be looking at this going, what the hell kind of music is that? It's, uh, it's classical is what it is. Anyway, give it a whack. 
once it starts playing, and that'll get you the Pinto achievement. So that's one thing out of like four that we're going to grab here. Uh, nothing to grab here apart from a couple of spare parts on that top shelf. Uh, we should have more than plenty more than enough coins because we are going to use our first coin for our first vending machine. Grab a cheeky little Kona Cola. Yeah, good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is the second one. Again, have a look on the shelves uh, just to see if there's any more spare parts and some any more batteries, as it were. Oh, of course, there is the Snow Bro as well. So make sure to grab the Henryville in the Snow achievement for grabbing the second Snow Globe. So that's the Snow Globe, the uh, Vending Machine, the Pinto achievement and trophy. And finally, this is a story-related one. Uh, basically, at the back of the store, we are going to grab some ice picks. So, you know, we can start climbing the ice walls. But that'll get us another achievement as well for Ice Climber. That's all, uh, that's all good, so as soon as you think you're all good, warm your cockles up once more, and then go back outside to where the frozen broski was and start your climbing. Welcome to the next part of this whole area. Right, we're going to be coming up straight to a Mr. Knight fragment with a uh, cheeky broom wolf. So, you know, whip out your weaponries. It makes all the girls go, ooh, and then laugh because you got, you got the revolver size of a revolver. Uh, start heading down, and again, you can see where the um, wolf will be because the screen starts changing and fading. So there's the fragment, so we're going to pick that up off the ground, and we're going to get herb number 9 out of 20, which should be uh, just around the corner, yes, so it should be just about around the corner. If we take a left, uh, just through these old trees, there it is, right in the corner, so that is herb number 9 out of 20. So, that'll do, pig, that'll do, now we're going to climb up. We're going to drop down, and then there's going to be another broom animal. This time, at the end of this section, as we jump down, it's going to be a big old moose bag. Must hold the key. He had to get to the radio tower. Damn, son, Broski, he ran me good. God damn, he ran me good. But again, you should have plenty of first aid kits by now, as long as you're using them kind of sparingly as well. Um, then it's all good. Uh, nothing to the house on the right, so we'll continue heading to the left. And here is where the fourth statue of St. Old Margaritaville is going to be. So have a little cheeky look at her right there. And they, oh, she got a little bit of uh, white powder on her nose. What the hell did Mary get up to when Jesus wasn't about? <laughs> well, that's for your interpretation. Uh, so, head to the left first and <laughs> go into the... We know all the Jesus bros like to have a good party. We know it. Uh, there's a coin here on the left. Again, make sure to pick up that Canadian coin. And there's going to be a couple of batteries and spare parts in here as well. So, grabeth what you canneth. And then once done, we can head back out. From here, we're going to nip to the left. And left again in order to get the hell out of here, boy. Oh 
Oh my god, the dogs! Anyway, let's travel to the old house now. So basically, we just have to head back anyway. Um, and we eff effectively have to head back to the old house anyway. Uh, it's been so long. So good to see you. And what are we going to do from here then? We're not going to the Ewok Valley just yet. That is for a lot later on in the game. We're actually going to mop up some of the last collectibles now. So the old house is as far as we can get. So pop your, mar pop your marker on the map like I just did. And then we're going to head for that. So here we are then, now we're just going to nip through the gap in the trees as we've always been doing and we're actually coming up to Mr. Knight Fragment number six. Oh, in fact, no, we're nowhere near it just yet. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to have to run anyway because the dogs ain't getting that far. Again, any real animals that you encounter, make sure to give them a good deep swerve. Not a good deep revolver pounding. This time it's definitely worth getting your shotgun out as it's going to be a bear broom animal this time. There will be a couple of wolves on the way as well, but we're actually just going to run straight past them. So when we get to this rock here, we're going to take a right and then we're going to keep continuing going around to the right. So again, if you want to, you can just ignore this wolf broom. He may give you a little bite on your old Ani, but that's fine. Ow! Like that. Uh, but continue heading on to the right. He'll eventually uh, stop. And then as we continue on to the right and start heading down the hill here, this is where the bear is going to be. So it will take two shots with the shotgun, so make sure your aiming is as fantastic as a good aimer, I suppose. <laughs> and just like that, it's easy as pie. Of this bear. Well, that was a hell of a bear. 
And, well, since, I, I mean, there's the fragment, but if there's any women watching, would you rather be stuck in the woods with a man, a bear, or a broom bear? Because, you know, these are more polar berry and snow ear and stuff, and they're more hardcore. Anyway, uh, that is, <laughs> that's the, still a question on everyone's mind, hilariously. Apart from the new meme girl, Hawk Tour. If you know, you know. And if you don't, Google it, because it's hilarious. Anyway, we're coming up to the next, uh, there's a, uh, so just up from where we fought the bear, there was the uh, next herb trophy, number 10, and then we're going to continue heading ar basically around to the right again, where we're going to be grabbing the next chest, so it should, that should be chest number 5 out of 10. wolves and anyway there we go so if you collected 40 batteries by now you will get the electrician achievement uh, just ignore the uh, screaming when dingo noise I'm not sure if that happens all the time uh, but he is currently chasing me because I crack my pants at the noise uh, but yes if you don't have the electrician achievement yet just uh, keep on collecting batteries as you go you will literally get way more than enough anyway so it, you pretty much can't miss it uh, so, once we head down, we are going to be heading, uh, doing a little map marking and going for the next Mr. Knight Fragmentios. In fact, this is an area that we are now done with, so um, we can actually just head onto the boat, and unless there's something else that you feel like you may have forgotten or whatever, uh, but hopefully you haven't if you've been following the guide, we can now jump on the boat, turn around and head to the next island. And in fact, it's where the story progression, I mean, that that just that island alone just felt like a day and an age really, didn't it? But we're heading all the way to the top where the radio tower is now, so the story will progress, as will the old collector spectacles. After much thought, the detective became convinced that this scientist this Jules de Mares must hold the key. He had to get to the radio tower.
I know, I know, you didn't have to say it. That driving was awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so there we go. Nice bit of log fire. Ga uh, game will save. Again, press the A button if you want to make a manual save here. Um, otherwise, there's a couple of spare parts and all the good stuff just chilling right there. Um, but before we head straight for the radio tower, what we're going to do, I'm going to put a marker down here. We're going to head sort of to the right, top right of the map. And we're going to go and get Mr. Knight Fragment number 7 out of 16. And there it is, sitting in all its blue delicious gloriness. The old glory hole of life is the fragment. Right, before heading back, uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to continue on forward. Just past this whole bunch of debris on the right. Uh, just nip through this area. There's going to be a little campfire coming up that we are going to, again, give ourselves a little uh, warm cocker. There it is, and a nice cheeky little auto save as well. And then right here, we can grab it, uh, some more ammo for the revolver and a couple of spare parts and another battery. So that'll do, pig. That'll do. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do now, again, there we go. We can save the game, whatever you want to do. Um, but what we're going to do is actually head back towards the way we came. But make sure to be looking at these. You've probably seen it as we went past these small uh, four sort of four and away rock formation that is the second inuk shook out of three so that's what we're actually going to head for right now so it should be on the way back after much thought the detective became convinced that this scientist this jules de Mares, must hold the key he had to get to the radio tower So just remember then that we are going to grab that second Inukshuk. The old, uh, there it is, look, couple, couple of them in a row, there you go, just like little big stone statue boys and girls. Uh, so, you know, I just take a look at each one just in case, you know, get my stamina up a little bit. But that is the second out of three. Then we can just head straight for the radio tower.
So we are on the way to said radio tower, but we are going to get chest number six out of ten while we are here. Um, just be aware there are a couple of wolves just popping around here. So again, you're going to have to be a little bit careful. Um, you know, again, try not to get bitten. That's uh, that's the primary goal. Don't die. Uh, but the, so again, you can either pop your camera out or your uh, pistol, but obviously don't kill the animals, but it is primarily sort of on the right hand side, this chest, this was a bit of a weird sort of tricky one to find, um, but if you try and stick with the sort of right hand edge as much as you can, it's going to be uh, in this general section, woof off yourself, by the way, Mr. Wolf there, it is not, that's part of a rock, sorry, ah, bang her off. Eh, eh, go away. Uh. No, 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 go away, stupid wolves. Anyway, uh, there is the chest, so yeah, as I said, primarily on the right-hand side. So pop that one open, a couple of goodies in there once again. That, that'll do nicely, right, and then nextly, we're going to go for the nextly herbly so effectively just in the same area um and yeah to follow the market So, once you do have herb number 11 out of 20, the radio tower is direct, basically directly in front of us, but we're going to go ahead and grab herb number 12 out of 20, which is going to be just behind the radio tower. So, head towards it, but don't head in just yet. Right, smashing them herbs in your brews like no tomorrow. So grab a couple of spare parts there off the boxes. Now we can head in and then we're going to have a little chat with... Um, you can repair that if you want, but there's not... There's just a couple of random tiny goodies behind the other gate. But don't worry about that. We're going to head in through this gate here, through the left. And then, well, what we're going to do first then, we'll take a picture. Get a couple of the new diarrhea entries going. So there's that one, so we'll keep the picture. This is actually Julie's de Merels himself. There we go. Have a little look if you want, just to make sure that you're all filled up nicely. And give him a little chat. Oh, salutations. Euh, voyons voir, vous devez être le détective... Euh, C'était quoi le nom déjà Ah Carl Fauban Ah, pas du tout. Mais votre posture, vos manières, votre accoutrement disent ancien militaire. Soit vous étiez le détective engagé par William, soit vous étiez un agent étranger venu me zigouiller. J'ai préféré opter pour la pensée positive. De... <rire> Choix judicieux. Ce que je peux vous dire, c'est que tout ce qui se passe en ce moment, la tempête, les anomalies, tout est lié à l'explosion à la mine il y a quelques jours. J'en sais peu de choses. Je travaillais directement du manoir depuis quelque temps. Il y a plusieurs causes possibles. En plus des recherches, l'HMC continuait de creuser. Il y a pu y avoir un souci technique, une erreur humaine. C'était peut-être même intentionnel. La HMC ne faisait pas d'unanimité.
il me faut un prototype qui a été laissé aux archives de HMC. Ça devrait permettre de mettre un terme à tout ça. Ah, c'est une matière... La radioactivité s'est probablement déjà attaquée à vos organes vitaux. Je parierais pas sur votre survie. Avec, en plus, toutes ces bêtes mutantes. Voici ma carte d'accès. Et vous pouvez... Ah ah! There we go, that's what we were after. So, the key access card. So, spanking your hairy crutch, thanking you very much. Okay, let's go ahead and grab a couple of more collectibles in this area, or in this room even. Um, there is a hockey card on this table that we are going to grab right now. It's going to be hockey card number 5 out of 11. Dominique G Gagon. Don't want to be gagging on that hock too. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. That girl has brought the whole world together. I'm, I like it. Um, there is a, another vending machine. Just around the corner as well, so that'll be number two out of seven. Just having a look for any more spare parts and batarans. But it turns out there's not. Uh, so just go up these little tiny bits of stairs here, and there is the second out of seven um, vending machine. So get yourself a cheeky Kona Cola, get yourself a cheeky battery. And obviously, if you need some more health, such as I do right here, you know, give yourself a cheeky little top up with the old first aid bag as well. Uh, that will definitely come in handy. Uh, having just had a look at the uh, extra bit of diary right there. And then this is effectively it. We can have a look in this little filing cabinet for a few more things and then let's get out of it. And once we have gotten out of it... For sure. um, Yes, so we're going to go straight through, so straight through these big double gates here, and then we're going to continue all the way down until we get back in our cheeky little sleddy dogs. Singularities were rather innate. Apparently, I appear to have missed the big uh, yellow gate there, standing just to the right of me. So, we are into the Hamilton Mining Corporation, or the HMC for short. We're going to stop right here. We're going to just nip into the building. Mainly, primarily, reasoning being, we're going to grab hockey cards 6 out of 11. But again, there's a couple of batteries and spare parts, obviously. So, uh, have a little look on your way through. And then, on this table, or this desk, Alexandre Fist. Or Fissé. Sorry, not, not, not fist. Don't fist, Alex. Don't do it. Uh, but that is hockey card number six. And again, if you want to make a little save here, chuck some logs in the campfire, make a manual save, whichever you're wanting to doing. And now we can get out of here. That's all it is. Personally, I'm looking at that bed in complete contempt awe right now. It is ten past four in the morning. I've woken up early to finish off this recording, and my God, I want to go back to bed. This is hard, hard, incriminating, hard stuff. Lack of sleep's not good for you. Anyway, uh, so there we go. We get some more diarrhea entries right there, and then we can actually get into level three now. Ooh, getting all... Woo. But first things first, we've got a, still a couple of collectibles to grab. So before heading in... I mean, you can get these collectibles after as well if you want, so don't worry about that. But we're going to go and grab them first. So we're going to head to the left... We're going to go past this big old truck boy on the left. Oh. And there's basically, we're going to go for another Mr. Knight fragment now. But where we have come in, what you need to do is head to the left hand side. And it should be where that truck we're going past just now. There is a gap on the left hand side of that truck, which we're going to go in through. But I go down a little bit further than I needed to, sorry.
There we go, I eventually made the turn. That was about as good as a Trent Alexander-Arnold in midfield for England there, isn't it? Yeah, pretty, I fail spectacularly there, sorry. So, again, uh, make sure your health is topped up and your freezing limbs are all good. Whap out your shotgun and head towards the fragment. Again, it's going to be another bear situation, which is why we're going all shotgunny. He had no doubt this amount of fragments would be enough for Jules de Mares. Next up in this same area, we're going to go ahead and grab herb number 13 out of 20 as well. And it's going to be, um, if we continue sort of heading towards the right, up to this big old pile of rocks. There it is, just sitting there, chilling and smoke pilling. Whatever the hell that is. Right, next up, we are going to uh, put another marker down and we are going to get... Mr. Knight Fragment number 9 out of 16 now. So just uh, put the marker down, head towards it. Man, I am telling you, wolves would be so much cuter if they just had gums instead of teeth. Yo, you you can try and bite me, wolf. Ha, huh, you can't. You can just gum me. It'll be like an old person sucking on a Werther's Original sweet, isn't it? You know, one of them. Uh, anyway, from where we just got the fragment, if we continue on a little bit more forwards, uh, we are actually going to be finding chest number seven. Sort of head down this hill to the left. Going around town, or you could have just stayed on top, whatever. Uh, but there is chest number seven. And with that marker laid down, Charlie Brown, now we're going to go for herb number 14 out of 20. So, uh, you know, run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Thank you. 
Yep, wasn't even about to play with those wolves. Couldn't be asked for that, so I just went the other way. And there's the other herbs. Job done. So that's number four. Teen out of 20. And then, effectively, we are now pretty much done with Leech Lake. So now, we can start heading towards the HMC. We're basically going... Going underground. Underground. This gaping hole that revealed itself to Carl gave him vertigo. It was not the height, but the immensity of the thing. Few images could have depicted so clearly the extent of the veracity with which men consumed these raw materials. It was on the scale of the worst natural disaster. <laughs> Okay, so once we get down here, uh, sorry, just a little bit of a pause going on, uh, just checking, but there is another bear, there is another broom bear that's going to be around here, so uh, effectively just what we have to do then, get out of your shotgun just in case, but you need to walk all the way around, you see the crash train over there, so we basically have to walk all the way around it, we can't go that way, we've got to go all the way around, but there is going to be a broom bear in the way, so we'll just shoot that one dead and then continue on our merry little way. His conversation with Jules de Mares had convinced him of the dangers of exposing himself to this smoke. Oh, oh, oh. oh when a bear rushes you like that, huh? I wouldn't feel safe in the woods with a bear. Would you? Anyway, heading to the building. Uh, well, the, the dilapidated building, if you want to call it that. There's a Canadian coin on the ground, which will grab another one. Some ammo, and again, some spare bits and bits. Bits and bobs, uh, but there are no collectibles in here. Uh, so that's about it. Ah, spare parts underneath us. There we go. Job done. 
uh, that's yeah that is about it uh, so we can just head left and head all the way down there is going to be another vending machine at the end of the tunnel walk into the light everybody walk into the light no stay away from the light because that means you're gonna die and I don't want anyone to die apart from bad people so right in this room then is the third Kona machine plus again a couple of bits on the table there so grab them all Now, I know what you're, you're thinking. In an underground laboratory, you're expecting security guards and bad people and stuff like that, but no, there is nothing. A lot of it is just abandoned a car from, apart from a couple of broom animals. So you've got nothing to worry about and nothing to fear down here. I've got you here. Right, so first things first, what we're gonna do, we are actually going to go, uh, sorry, we're gonna go back on ourselves a little bit. I missed the locker room. Uh, but that's where we need to go, so effectively, as soon as you came in, you just had to go in more or less immediately to your left. Yep, down here. And we'll have a little pop in. Again, don't worry about the blaring noises or anything. Have a look in each locker, but behind the middle toilet stall is another Canadian coin for the uh, vending machine, so grab that. Another yummy first aid kit there as well. By the way, does nobody wash their uh, clean their toilets in this game? Bit of bleach. I know you've all been frozen to death and everything, but uh, gotta chuck some frozen bleach down the toilet, huh? Before you came, before you went, actually. Uh, so head down now. We're going to take the next left down this hallway. The uh, it was a canteen. Sorry, my, my eyes are very broke. Go into the first room on the right here, and we're going to find a jolly chimp. Number three out of four. There it is. So there's the Jolly Chimp. Take a look at its butt. Yeah, Jolly Chimp butt. That's uh, that's what gets you going in the morning, huh? And then if we immediately turn around, we can see vending machine number four out of seven. So again, take a cheeky little drink. You're going to need it. This is a lot of back and forth in this uh, section. Damn, that's a lot of flight of stairs. Jesus. Nobody needs that many stairs. 
Again, no enemies or anything to worry about, so don't worry about that, but we do have to take a couple of pictures here for our diarrhea entries. A deep-seated terror seized Karo. He had reasons to doubt his visions, but this alert, on the other hand, was very real. He had to act, and fast. Sorry, again, I was just checking these rooms for any spare parts and batteries. Again, even though we should have more than plenty enough batteries now. And we have one dead old scientist, though. Unfortunately, not frozen. Carl now understood why someone would sabotage a rich mining entrepreneur's property. But what could have compelled the attackers to shoot an unarmed man? So the main console panel that we are needing is literally right by that dead scientist right there. Uh, so just go ahead, push the button and that will get rid of the blaring noise. So what we effectively have to do now is basically find five batteries. Again, that's going to, you can see all the switches in front of you there. That's basically going to require us, here's the first battery on the right anyway. So pick that up and put it in the machine here on the left. So that gives us a tiny little bit of power which will enable us to... Um, to put one switch on and one switch on only. Power had been restored to grant entry to the wing. Uh, oh, in fact, two, actually. Sorry. Yeah, so two. But that's all we've got enough time for. So uh, put in the middle two buttons. Uh, click those boys on, first of all. Obviously, the more batteries you get, the more doors we'll be able to open up and everything. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory, really. But first things first, when we come down the elevator, head through the glass in the middle... Head to the right over the little stairway and then take a picture of the, um, that's an unfortunate looking burn death shadow right there. Oh, that must have been a bit panel chocolat way to go. In horror. How much heat would an explosion need to generate to incinerate a body where it stood? Okay, so head back on yourself and then go back through the left and then we are going to go back up into the elevator. Ding dong. It does get a bit tiresome towards the end though, having to go up and down and up and down makes you a bit seasick. Right, so uh, now we've done that, we're going to turn off uh, turn off D and then we're going to turn on B. So make sure that B and C so the uh, two dials on the left are on and switch to green. And then once that's done, let's head back down. And then we are actually going to go into B, the B section of the B sharps. So once we've headed down the spookiness of the hallway, but there are no spookinesses to worry about. So again, don't you worry about that. Uh, there is a couple of things that we're going to be grabbing up here. Uh, so we are going to head into the room on the left. First of all, we need to take, a, again, a couple of pictures here for the journal entry. So the first one is the whole bunch of x-rays on the board. Yep. I can see a pubic bone in the top left corner. Yeah. Uh, I can see a hand and... No, you know, all types of bones and body. That's what an x-ray is. Um, then, just have a little look around here. I don't 
think there's anything pretty useful in terms of spare parts for the achievement or any batteries for the achievement if you still haven't got that one yet. Oh, there is a Canadian coin in there. So if you do need some more coins, there was another one in there. Uh, head back out into the main area. There's a first aid kit on the bottom shelf. So grab that. That's a save um, machine. So just like the uh, fire logs and the camps, you can uh, save the game there if you so wish. A couple of spare parts here on the right as well. And that's pretty much about it in terms of spare parts. So what we are going to do, we are going to head into the room on the right, which is already opened up for us. Again, with your camera. animals were treated without any dignity and then we'll get out of here go down the next door on our right and there's only one door that we can go in for now so if you head down a couple of doors the door which you will see open on the right is the one that we are going to need to go in right about yeah there it is so just nip in and again you're going to be watching another scene there are no, uh, there are a couple of open doors, but there's nothing of uh, anything worth grabbing in here. With all this surveillance equipment, they were sure not to miss anything. These interrogation rooms were more like an asylum cell than an administrative office. So, introduce introduce yourself to uh, Francis Bacon or oh, I don't know his actual name I forgot again um, but you'll just have to nip through most of the dialogue options until um, he gives us the option to uh, what we need bye the detective broke off this strange conversation feeling like he'd failed to get to the bottom of things Oui. Je m'appelle Thomas Matou. C'est à cause du chien de garde de Hamilton. Ah, bonne. C'est pas ce que j'ai dit, mais je vous connais pas. Moi, je suis juste mécano. Parlez aux autres employés. L'LE? Je peut-être où en trouver une. Je peux vous la... Je m'appelle Thomas Matouche. Bye. Ah oui, oui, senor. No problem. So, head out of the room, head left and head all the way back out. So into this main little room area. Now, what we need to do then, so this door now has opened up on the uh, left, this big shutter door. There's a whole bunch of wolves. These won't attack you, so you can take a picture. But what you need to do then is go further into the room where a broom wolf will appear. So you'll have to quickly shoot him or hatchet him or hatchet it dead. And then the shutter will open up for us again. So if you go past these wolves, that is where the broom wolf will appear. And for me, I crap my pants, because I just picked up this jack, which we need to pick up, and then I got bitten on the A again. So, uh, yeah, that's how I figured that one out. <laughs> Thank you. 
But now we've got the jack of destiny. Now you know where we'll be rocking because it's friggin' insane. So grab the old uh, trolley dolly big boy jack magack thing. Yeah, that thing. And then we're going to put it right underneath this lovely looking gap, which is already there for us, which is nice. And since we've already got the pipe as well from the other room, that'll give us the ability to nip it inside here. Now, as soon as we crawl under, we're going to grab <coughs> hockey card number seven out of 11 off this shelf. So welcome to all American, America's favorite chap, the 7-Eleven, William Bellabru. I, I forgot the name. I actually missed that one. Uh, so once you've done that, you can actually climb underneath here, and we're actually, this is where we're going to grab battery number two out of five. Uh, again, just have a look for some spare parts on the shelf, there might be a few batteries and everything. Uh, don't worry about going in the um, hatch just yet, we don't need to go in there just yet. What we do need is right here, battery number two, so then you can just head back out and go all the way back up to the elevator into the upstairs room and pop that in. As he left the medical wing, Carl thought about all the misery Mr. Knight had wreaked. How many lives had Hamilton's negligence ruined? How many had died? And for what? Okay, next up, we are going to go to the C section of life. So ignoring B, and we're going to go to the old C. Now, there is another broom wolf down the next hallway they're about to go da uh, down. So we are going to need uh, your favorite weapon of choice, because at the end of this corridor, that is where the broom wolf will appear. Look at that, look at that. Shot of a professional marksman right there. Uh, okay, so what we could do is we're not going anywhere apart from straight in front of us. Uh, we can go through the forklift here, even though it kind of doesn't look like we can, we actually can. Again, you can have a little save on these uh, big save machines if you so wish. Otherwise, we are just going to, ooh, look at that. We're gonna take a picture of this boy. It's the heart. The heart of all the animals in the kingdom, or something or other. Uh, so that is another diary entry, of course. And then what we're going to do from here is take a left. A uh, couple of things on the shelf, a couple of more spare parts and everything. Um, but the main thing is we're going to go into the next door here on our, well, what was on our left. There we go, this one. And we're going to grab a hockey card from the top of the shelf. Simon Zou Gerard. Oh no, Zod. I thought... My eyes are busted. I thought that said zoo. Um, have a look in here for a couple of spare parts and batteries. And then there is the fifth vending machine. So the hockey card, uh, hockey card eight and vending machine number uh, five. Sorry. And then we'll have a little, little cheeky look over here. Again, just always check if a spare part. It's purely because you want to get one or two bits of spare parts. So that's why we're going looking a lot so we can get that achievement done and dusted eventually oh nice little pickup truck my geodes must be acknowledged all right martin prince okay a poochie 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 again top simpsons episoding right there 
All right then, so we are going to head on to what you thought you couldn't get on, but you actually can. Now, you don't actually have to climb up here, but there's just a couple of things we can grab up here, like spare parts and batteries, again, if you so wish. Because there, right on the floor, is where we need to go in order to get the next battery. For such a secure location, the entrance to this tunnel seemed unusually easy to access. Each battery brought back to the control room allowed Carl to evacuate toxic fumes or drain corridors, giving him access to new wings of the facility. He hoped to find more answers to his questions there. So ignore me there, we are going to put B and C back on, plus this time it's important uh, with the... Uh, we got two, four, six. With the fifth one there, where ventilation is, make sure to turn ventilation on. If you do not turn ventilation on, you will not be able to get through the next section. So this time we're going to head back down again, and once again we're going to head to the old bee bags. And then when we get here, what we'll do is take a right. Now, we're basically heading back underneath this, uh, the shutter doors right here. Um, and this time, we're actually going to go into the ventricle. Uh, basically, it's full of water. There's only one path that you can go. Um, you swim up and you swim down. It's, uh, you know, very easy. So to go down, just point down and start going. So again, there is only one path to take. And always have a look out for these sort of pockets of air. Uh, just go up for a little breather when possible. This area is where if we if the ventilation was off we would be getting poisonly gas to death so uh, that's why we turn the ventilation on um, there's only a few I think this might be the last one actually um, until we get to the side that we want and turn around because that's the way you go in there we go
And once we get underneath here, there is the third battery. Or fourth. Which one are we on now? No, I think it's the fourth one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, right. So make sure to open up the shutters first so we can obviously get out. That'll come in handy. And we've actually ended up back in the C section of life. Uh, so again, just head towards... Uh, or get back up into the next room, into the main second floor room, and pop your battery in. Oh yes, it is four. Yeah, we got through that quick, didn't we? Right, so now we're going to get to some new places. We're going to put on D. We can turn the ventilation... No, we're going to keep that on. Yeah. Sorry, I just got a little bit ahead of myself. So this time we are going down... Downtown all the way to D-Town. So there will be another broom wolf right at the end of this hallway. You'll already be able to see the shadow. Uh, these doors are locked until we kill said wolf. Uh, so you can see the shadow, but he won't actually appear around the corner until you get around the corner. So, you know, be on your tippy toes. <laughs> see? No, no Rishi Sunak, no sky. And no cry. All right then, let's grab a few collectibles then. So right at the very left-hand side of the room, we're gonna pop into this one first. And we are gonna have a few little uh, halves a look. There's no collectibles in here, but there's a couple of diary entries that we need to look at, the investigation notes. And in this little filing cabinet as well, there is a pay stub. So uh, that's uh, part of the diary journal entries again. Which Carl had a hunch would be useful. But it is actually in the next room to our left where we're going to find the next figure of Mary in Dr. Catherine Lewis's and Zagurni Zagurns. Uh, that is That should be number five out of eight for us. Yep, there we go. So look at it as much as you can. And then ha obviously have a look in all of the drawers and everything. See what deliciously spare bits you can find. <laughs> So let's go ahead, turn the corner. Again, spooky shadow. Ooh, but uh, there's nothing there apart from... Ooh, it's my shadow. Plus a battery. Yep, good battery. Uh, go to the door on the left. This is the office where... Jules, this is the office of Jules de Mer. And this is where the next hockey card is. This should be number 9 out of 11. Olivia Leblanc. I, I couldn't see the surname there. My eyes are all googly. Um, anyway... So, yeah, that's hockey card 9 out of 11. So, again, have a little look around. Have a look in the drawers. This letter and that is a, another letter. So, the next collectible we're going to go for is the vending machine 6 out of 7. That'll be coming up pretty shortly. So, we're going to take a left. Uh, squeeze through the forklift here and the boxes. And then if we take a right, because that is obviously the only way that we can go, 
There is the next vending machine, number six out of seven. So then the door that we actually need to go through, if we just take a right from, uh, just have a look at the kitchen area, we need to go through the door straight in front of us, not the door on the right. Um, again, I was just at having a little check, see, see if there's anything good in here, but there's not particularly at all. So this is the door we need to go through. And right here is what we, we just need to grab a few things, um, investigation letters and some other bits. Dig up a person's secrets, and you can control them. HMC's tentacles reached far and wide. And so from here then, what we can do is actually head all the way back now, um, and head back into the elevator to go up to the second floor room. Oh, by the way, when I say second floor room, we're actually going to be going down C, the C corridor this time. So not the second floor room, my apologies about that one, but we are going down the C corridor. And again, for good reason, we're going to go for another tiny, tiny, tiny little swim. Um, but not the way we, not, not the uh, pipes interjoining uh, B and C. So uh, what you'll need to do then is go straight forward so don't go to the right and go through that sort of swimming pipe area it's this one just before this big heart of the animals or whatever it is uh, so going through this one again have a little look at some spare parts and everything on your way otherwise we're just going to go for once again another little swim No! Has progress been halted? Yes, it has. End the game. We're not going to solve the mystery, sorry. Shutters broke. Water. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is actually get back into the water. We're going to go up into this little ventrilocation system. Climb up. Dive under. And then we're going to take a left. And then another left. And that is to grab the third out of four snow globes in the game. So again, you've got another achievement coming up. So once we just Charles pop in Bear here, oh, delicious. Oh, in fact, no, it's not there. Oh, yes, it is here. Sorry, it is right on the left-hand side. That's the one. Mine in the snow. So mine, mine. So once you have grabbed that uh, snow globe, there's a couple of letters we're going to grab here. One there and one straight in front of us. Um, again, just for the journal entries. More about the investigation to which she'd been subjected. Carl could hardly believe it. This arrowhead suggested that Mistonite had been known to early peoples in the distant history of the continent, and that they had even fashioned objects from it. And then what you can do then is actually interact with each of the three lockers with the numbers in, so it's 252 for the investigation into Thomas, um, and the other ones, there's another one on this side, on the bottom somewhere. There it is. 
And that is going to be Francois Becon. And then the opposite side is where we're going to find the third one. And once again, crawl right under that ventilation system. Lovely. This time we're heading to the right. And then right again. Get out of here. Hmm, I wonder what awaits us right. Uh, oh, it's uh, it's more swimming. Lash. Lovely. Right. Uh, head back the uh, way that we came. Only this time, when we get back here then, what we need to do is actually turn the, uh, we're going to have to turn the ventilation back off, uh, which will enable us to turn the water drainage off. So you will, again, depending on the power, uh, we'll just turn off D, turn off the ventilation, put the water on, and that is job done. Uh, there we go. So you should be able to turn on all four doors now, since we've got eight plus the so that's what it should look like so b c d and e turn off ventilation turn on water uh, let's have it boys let's go okay so back down to the c corridor or the old c corridor there we go. And again, like I said, we're going to go for uh, yet another swim. Only this time we will have... Uh, well, we've got the ability to well, get the battery now, I suppose. All this water on the walls and the floor... Oh, 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 really? Must have previously been flooded. Yes, narrator, we swam through it, of course. Uh, so we'll head down the linear little uh, pathway. We're going to be get grabbing another fragment, actually. And what we'll do, we'll crawl straight through here. And there it is. Mr. Knight fragment number 10. Out of 16. That is a job well done. Uh, we're actually not too far from finishing the HMC part now. So, again, we will go straight forward, climb the ladder up again. Oh, go it. Sorry, going all around. Sorry, yep. Yeah, so, go all around, back to the same part. Climb up the ladder. And ta da! Now, we are actually going to have to go now all the way. Uh, where are we going? So the fragment of Mr. My Right. We need to go to the B corridor now.
So, yeah, I thought there was going to be an animal, but there was nothing, not but a ting. Right, what we're going to have to do is, I don't know if you have to read all of the documents here, but I do, uh, just to be set on the safe side. The uh, three documents that we picked up about Francois Bacon, Pierre-Marc Julier, and the other one. But before we go left, what we're going to do is go down this hallway all the way to the end right, and there's going to be another Mr. Mike fragment right here, right there. So once you go into the room next to where we've got to finish it off, go in here, pick up the Mr. Knight fragment, and then we can take the next left, go back into the room and speak to Jean-Pierre, Mark, whatever his name is here. Um, you can just say, here are the files, and that is job done. We'll get the access card. Now... The reason um, you didn't see the Mr. Knight fragment for me on screen is because um, I wasn't recording when I actually collected it. So, yeah. So I'd stopped recording, went to record it again, and then I forgot to press record on the recorder. Uh, that is why there is no uh, Mr. Knight fragment. But yes, in the room, like I said, next to... In the room next to the uh, guy that we got to speak to, that is where Mr. Knight fragment number 11 is. So, uh, we are now, effectively, uh, almost done with this bit. So now we're going to head to the A corridor and get out of here. So we're obviously not getting out of here, of course. What we are going to do is head down the... We need to find the locker room again. And you're going to have to watch another scene, but that is where the access card is. So, yeah. So we're almost getting out of here. Alright then, so once we've got that and some more ammo, that's all good. We're going to head back to the C corridor. And then we're going to uh, go underground. Uh, once again. So when, when we get here, of course, this will look familiar. We came here when it was a bit more flooded. Uh, forklift's not going to work, obviously. So we're going to climb up the ladder just to the left of said forklift. Then we can just simply head down. 
Uh, I think there might be a spare part or something here or a battery. Oh, no, it is a spare part. That's nice. This is where the fifth battery is. We're going to have to get rid of the forklift. Uh, oh, the um, pump truck, sorry. With things in the way. And then we can grab the battery. Uh, sadly, we can't just simply go and uh, get it out of here. We're going to put it in this box for a minute. <clears throat> and we're going to pick up the gear part off the table. Then we can just pop that in, and then we can pop the bus of repairs. The conveyor had started up again, and its belt led to an unknown location. Perhaps to an unexplored section of the laboratory? That's what we came to see, yes, sir. Okay, right, so uh, what we're going to need to do now in order to finally finish this last bit and get the hell out of here, we actually have to switch on the water drainage and the ventilation. Um, so you're just going to have to get rid of one of these doors. Uh, you can go ahead and just get rid of the D, no, the E door, D or E, I think should be fine. Oh. B, yeah, yeah, no, B, D, E, yeah, that should be fine. Um, because what we're actually going to do is go through the C corridor. Uh, once you've done that, so again, make sure the uh, ventilation and the water has been switched on. Uh, sorry, the D corridor, so yeah, going back through the D corridor, we've got the access key card, we are all good. So, nothing in that room because we've already been in it. Um, of course, this was flooded before, but we'll take a left going through this door here. And again, I think there's a couple of spare parts or some batteries around in this room. That's fine. But what we actually need is the ladder to climb up. So, we're going to climb up there and there's going to be another body. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we've effectively finally going to end this part. So, take a picture of the body and do all your journaling bits, grab what you need. 
Had he really been talking to a ghost? Or was it just the prolonged exposure of his brain to the mistonite that was beginning to warp his senses? Were they really mutually exclusive? Either way, Thomas Matouche was well and truly dead. The explosion had taken him out as he was about to grab the mistonite phaser. Right, that's it. So, obviously, if you've been following along, hopefully you would have got the final log entry there. Uh, so, you should have got two achievements. And with that one, we can now head all the way back to the A corridor. A. And, um, yeah, let's get out of here. Finally. Finally. It's been, it's been 84 years. Carl had recovered what Jules de Mares had sent him to the lab for. It was not without relief that he told himself he could finally return to the surface. Having exited the bowels of the earth and finally reached fresh air, Faubert could now set off towards Jules' lair. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So once again, once you speak to the old Demels right here, you should be grabbing three achievements should pop now. One for uh, being able to get the Mr. Knight phaser itself. Again, we you need at least eight of these in order to get this built. And if you've been following along, we should have more than enough. Um, then we should also get the Arm to the Teeth achievement for getting all the weapons in the game and the Journal of Leech Lake. Which, of course, that would have been the final one. So let's just uh, wait till that pops again. Arm to the teeth. Journal of Leech Lake. And I th think that's it. Unless I somehow missed one. No, that was it. So yeah, all three achievements there should have popped for you. Lovely. Right, now there's only one place to go. The Iwiwak Valley. Iwiwak. Iwiwak. I don't know, but it is the Valley of Death. So, that's where we're going. Uh, now, it's basically, what we're going to do is travel to the old house, and it's on the very right-hand side of the map of the old house. So, uh, that's where we're heading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Now, what's funny is, you know, we, we went through all that to grab a couple of access cards. Um, surely we could have just... There's no people about. We could have just grabbed some bolt cutters or, you know, something to just cut our way through. But there we go. You know, that wouldn't be very nice of us, though, would it? So, welcome to the Iwiwak Valley. Now, we uh, are basically just going to be um, collectible, uh, collectible hunting for the majority of this. What is effectively the last hour of the game. Um, so obviously the diary entries as we go, but we are effectively going to be grabbing three Mr. Knight fragments in a row, which should be 12, 13, and 14. So again, expect the hostile broom animals to be like, Hey, son of a death, man, Mr. Knight fragment. Oh, and pop over here, we can see another body. Um, I don't believe this uh, counts as a frozen body though unfortunately
Okay, oh hi guys! So yes, thought I'd leave you just grab those three Mr. Knight fragments on their own. Uh, but now we are coming into the Lumbar Camp, or the Lumbar Camp, sorry. Where we are going to grab another, the final snow globe of the game. And the six out of seven, uh, six out of eight figure of Mary. This is a frozen horse, unfortunately it doesn't count as a frozen body. But, uh, hey, gotta do what you gotta do to stay warm. And whatever protein you need as well. I mean, the horse isn't going to feel it. He's already frozen. That's up. Got some fires. Ah, nice. Don't worry about it, Carl. Just just have a day off now, isn't it? Have a day off. Bit of horse meat. And just have a little sleep. Enjoy your day. Um, right, so the first thing we want to do... We will come back to this cabin a little bit later on. But we do want to go to the cabins on the ground, sorry. Now, that was me looking at the map. All oh, totally wrong. But we're going to go into this first cabin in the woods right here. Now, there are, there's no possibility to get some fires going at the moment, but don't worry, if you're running low, the, um, there is in the cabin at the top, if you need it. But once you get in here, um, there is the snow globe, the Iwiwak snow globe. So you'll get the Valley and the Snow Achievement for that, so now we have to be on not on the lookout for any snow globes anymore. So that is fine, just fine. So once we are done in this cabin, we're going to go to the right and go into the next cabin in order to get the next figure of Saint Mariness. Dominoes. I like Dominoes. Actually, I don't, cause it's it's basically just expensive diarrhea, isn't it? Uh, Dominoes. Um, <laughs> pretty much. No offense, of course, to all Dominoes across the UK, but it uh, does give me the old uh, 
The old, ah, Jesus Christ, I just got shot in the leg. What the hell? Anyway, there is a trap wire, which I don't think, uh, you probably can't avoid. But anyway, grab the fire, pop it in, warm your tootsies up. There we go. That's nicely done. He felt as if he wanted to laugh. Beautiful. And then in this room, also, there is the Jolly Chimp. So that should be your fourth out of fourth. So, Symbolonius. Take a look at that monkey butt for the last time. Eh, 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 eh. Uh, because we don't have to be on the lookout for any of them anymore. So, happy with that. There's always a nice part of the game where you start banging out all the collectibles. Oh, and I finally get 100 spare parts as well. So, you might have got that before. You may get it in a little bit if you don't have it yet. But again, obviously, every cabin and stuff we go in, obviously, just be on the lookout as always. Anyway. Um, so, next up, we are going to grab the herb. Herb 15 out of 20 is what we're going to grab next. So we'll just pop that down on the map and go, go, go. So we've come up this way um, because there is a, another frozen body that we are going to take a look at. So this should be number five out of six. Now we haven't seen one for a while, but there he is. He's looking... Ah, oh, no, not the cold. No. Oh, oh, no, not just stop oil protesters. Ew, no. Go away. Go away, stupid people. Uh, so, take a picture of the frozen body, and of course, since we've interacted with him, that is going to be frozen body number five out of six. The Lumberjack. Oh no, Dexter Finale. Oh no, go away. Anyway, uh, get the tripwire... Well, you don't have to get the tripwire part, but in this next section, there are a whole bunch of tripwires that we need to be careful of. They, they are pretty visible, as long as you're looking at the ground. Um... I don't believe there's anything else in this section, so we can just go ahead, get out our Mr. Knight phaser, and then what this does is basically, you hold it for a few seconds, and then it lets off an incredible blast of Mr. Knightness. Badoom! And that gets rid of any blue crystals that are in the way, so it comes in mega handy, doesn't it? Uh, so up we go, the next collectible we're going to be going for is number 16 out of 20, but... We need to be grabbing four of these red Mr. Knight fragments. So obviously when the screen goes incredibly red, that means uh, there's one on the way. But going through the trees, just be careful because there are all tripwire parts, all connected to the trees, as you can see. So um, you'll be looking at them. Just look at the ground, bottom of the trees, and you should be fine. Unsettling and bewitching all at once, it burned you just by looking at it, and yet you couldn't help but want it. Now the red fragments, they are just for story purposes only. We have to collect these, but they're not, uh, they're not going towards the achievement, as it were. Um, so, yeah. Right, let's pop out a rifle. There's going to be a broom animal, I believe, in the not-so-distant future, as we're going to go for the next herb, which should be... More or less right in front of us, but again, keep looking out for any trip wires.
Ah, nice, nice. There it is. There it be. Okay, so with that one done, we can... Uh, let's get back on the map. And we're going to sort of pretty much... Um, yeah, we're going to sort of head back on ourselves. We haven't... We only could, didn't come to this area earlier because we needed the Mr. Knight phaser. Um, we needed to find the first red fragment. Although I suppose eh, you could have done it in any order. But anyway, that's where we're heading on the map. So, hark to it, boys. Yeah. Oh, and I also apologize here for the uh, long pause. There is no reason I'd done that. I simply forgot to um, edit it out. And because I've edited out a lot of stuff, it's, it's just easier for me to talk so, um, rather than just, yeah. So, skip it about ba ba boo yeah, licking on my big toe. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Right, we're back now. You're back. A cave like this could have escaped his gaze. Fortunately, Carl knew how to climb. One could only hope that the Mistonite was hidden there. So there is the uh, next herb plant coming. Now this one wasn't actually planned. I didn't realize there was more than 20 in the game, in all fairness. Um, but since it appeared on our map and we're quite close to it, we'll pick that one up. 
Uh, so now you'll be on uh, herb 18 out of 20. Well, that worked out well. All right, so since we are here, we're going to have to be doing some strange cave-in things. The puzzle for it is easy enough. Well, easy enough once I figured it out because it took me many attempts to realize what the hell I was trying to do and what the actual solution was. So, yeah, that's a pain. Anyway, head towards the marker and do some ice climbing. Now you can go into the cave right here. These, there is the second um, red fragment, but it's not here. Um, so, we, so what we could do here is just interact with the scientist, interact with his head, interact with the weapon, and take a picture. And then we'll go out of the cave, go all the way to the left, and that is where the small puzzle begins. So, this is like a sort of maze-like puzzle. Now, I tried going in all different directions just to see if it was the same every time or, you know, if there was something specific to look out for. And then all you have to do is get out your Geiger counter and follow the arrows. That's, um, yeah, that's it. So get your Geiger counter out and it literally tells you where to go. So once I figured that out, well, boy, didn't I feel like a giant case. Once we get here, then, we are going to find the 7th St. Mary statue. Unless you went to the old house, fixed up all the spare parts, and went upstairs and had a look at that uh, Mary statue, um, this will be your 8th one. But if you've been following along with the guide, that is number 7. Uh, so have a look in here. Um, we, like I said, we're at the top of the cave now. Give that a little fiery uppy. And see if there's anything else you want to grab here. Uh, really, you don't need to be looking for anything now if you've got the spare parts achievement. But if you don't, of course, keep having a look for the spare parts. Uh, so we'll continue heading down. And then you can interact with the other scientist who has the fragment in hand.
Carl could not recognize in this scene either a rational crime or murderous fury. It was desperation and madness that had dealt these blows. A madness greater than man that vibrates an incandescent red. Carl felt that he would soon come to the end of his quest. His inventory weighed heavily by his side. The bite of the icy wind had never been such a welcome feeling. The exit at last. I'm staying up in my tower. Anybody like the Devil Wears Prada, the band? Not the film. The film was actually quite good too, but uh, the band is awesome. Uh, so head into this uh, little building here. There is going to be a hockey card, 10 out of 11, just there in this chest. Jean-Francois Fist. There's a lot of fisting going on today. Fissayin, sorry, fissetin, fissayin. Uh... However you say it, I, I assume it's fissé, because that sounds eloquently, delicately more French. Uh, so once you have that hockey card then, again, next thing we are going to go for is the next chest.
Now, there is a wolf that did start deciding to chase me. Uh, so, what I did was, uh, well, I'm going to shoot the ground and see if he bags off. Go away. Go away. Spanking you. There we go. So, that did work for me this time. Right. So, that is chest 8 out of 10, like I said. Now, the next collectible we're going to go for is Mr. Knight number 15 out of 16. Just a bit further on. Men who would prove this theory wrong. Dying bears. Okay, next up, we're going to go for chest nine out of ten now, uh, which is a uh, bit of a trek, but, you know, well, there it is. So mark it up and get to it. Carl Faubert was a sensible man. Attacking that wolf would not be among his smartest life choices. So, yes, boys, chest 9 out of 10 done. We are now going to go for herb 19 out of 20. So, mark it up and hark to it.
Okay, so next up then, we are going to get rid of the blue crystal right here. And we're going to be going for, I can't remember which... I think this is the red frag... Yes, it is the red fragmentite. There's going to be five or six wolves here, so take them out and, you know, destroy, destroy the fries. And once you're done turning those wolves into fries, mm, could go for a big batch of fries right now. Now, of course, uh, being in uh, being in Wales and Britain, fries are like skinny chips, and in America, fries are like fries are not the crisp kind, they're the fries kind, but they're not the. Oh, why can't we just be as one, America? Why can't we be as one? Anyway, once you've got that then, the next uh, collectible we're going to be going for is the final m blue Mr. Knight. Now this is where the achievement should unlock for you for grabbing all the uh, Mr. Knight fragments. It didn't only unlock for me because the one that I found, uh, the one that I showed you earlier, which I didn't record, I'd actually missed that one playing the first time through. And then, so I grabbed it, got the achievement to unlock, and then I was going to show it on screen, but that is where I forgot to press record. So, ah, ah, I'm douchebag, sorry. But yes, so you should get the achievement there for collecting all 16 out of 16 Mr. Knights. Go away, wolves. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go for the final, as it turns out, the final herb. 
Um, there is another one I do grab just in case, uh, but this will be your final herb. Right, now we're going to grab the last Fragmanite, the red one, and this boy is the old big broom moose. The old chocolate moose, so, uh, yeah. He's not so bad, just, you know, rifle him down, do the thing, grab the frag me, and, uh, yeah. Ah, get it! Stupid rifle. If that was a moose, it was the most massive beast he had ever seen in his life. And it was so white, its eyes so blue, it was best to stay away. It had almost cost him dearly, but Carl finally had all four stones in hand. He could start heading towards Jules Camp. So, now we are going to grab the final Inukshuk. Of course, we've got one pretty much at the very beginning of the game, another one pretty much halfway through, and one more towards the end of the game, so very well hidden. Uh, but stay at the sort of right side of these rocks, you can already see it in the distance. But once you've looked at it, that will get you the achievement there for looking at all three Inukshuks in the game. Improvisation and chaos marked the place. A makeshift camp had been set up here to accommodate the first victims of the explosion. It was apparent that, despite all the scientists who gravitated around Hamilton Mining Corporation... Okay, welcome to quarantine. Right. Uh, we're going to be finally getting the sixth frozen body. We're going to be getting the final chest. Um, and, in fact, Jules de Merles is in this camp as well, so we're going to be grabbing the final hockey card as well. Um, so, again, have a look in these first two tents if you want. I've got to apologise, this part, for some reason, was confusing for me. There's a couple of tents behind these tents, and an another couple of tents behind those tents. Uh, but take a picture of Fleeing Gunshot Man.
here is a the other couple of tents that we can have a look and interact with. Um, again, it's always worth coming in to each one, do a bit of exploring in order to get the uh, diary entries, get a couple more journey entries and stuff. Um, plus, there are two more dead bodies in the next tent. Um, which, again, don't count for the frozen achievement, but I wanted to show you just in case. So, there's two. They look very peaceful. Ish. Apart from the, you know, maggots and stuff crawling their eyeballs. That, uh, yeah. That probably nips a bit. Very eager to clean up the place. Had shot. Carl could see before him a genuine scene from the war. Okay, let's go and get that last frozen body then. So, from here, we will go towards the train. And then, if we go to the other side, there's going to be like a makeshift camp or something. So, we just nip it to the other side. Heading all the way down, you're going to see one dead bro on the floor. That's not the bro that we're after. It's the bro standing up here. There he is. How did he just stand there with a gun? Well, how did he just freeze straight away? Frozen in action. That must have been one hell of a frozen win. But anyway, once you've interacted with him, that should get you the frozen achievement for finding six frozen bodies. Go around to the left and then some. And then that is the final chest as well. So you'll get the parachute achievement too. So that should be uh, all six frozen bodies and the all ten chests done. Complete us and Imanitos. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go behind the second row of tents to find Jules de Mel and find the final hockey card as well now. Enfin, vous en avez mis du temps. Nous sommes près du cœur d'Atlantis. En théorie. Avez-vous des... So yeah, make sure you took a picture of the dead body in the medical tent. Sorry, I did forget to do that earlier. But once you've spoken to Jules, you've picked up the hockey card. That should be another two achievements here. The Journal of Iwiwak Valley. And, of course, the Paraboliques fan. Okay, so... Oh, and True Detective, of course. That's for uh, completing all the pages of Carlos's journal. Now, don't worry if you don't have that one yet. You can effectively continue after the game and uh, see which ones you're missing. But, hopefully, that shouldn't be a problem and you've grabbed everything by now. Um, so, effectively, all we got to do now is go ahead and face the belly of the beast. 
There's only one more collectible left to get, and that's at the very end for the final vending machine. Um, now, this isn't really a boss. We just have to basically... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll show you. But it's not too bad. Carl Faubert now had everything he needed to fight. The tools, the resources, and the courage. All he needed now was that little push. The one that pushes us off the cliff and into the icy waters. A little bit of madness. Right, so what we need to find are two red beacons, and we need to shut them off. But what will happen is the Wendingo is going to come out of um, various sort of red and blue crystals. Now, what you can do is actually shoot him twice, and then he'll start walking off and go into one of the red crystals again. So whenever you hear the scream, see where he's coming from, which should be straight in front of us the first time. So shoot him once, and he'll get stunned for a few seconds. Shoot him again. Sometimes he goes off to the side, so just be careful of that. But once you have shot him twice, he will just start walking off. He won't attack you then. Although he will scream at you and you will get knocked down, so, you know. Um, but what you're doing then is, on the map, you're just aiming towards the two exclamation points in order to shut off the beacons. Uh, now, in terms... Now, it's not random in terms of where the Wendigo comes from. So he should come from exactly the same places that he does on my screen. But that is effectively all you got to do then. So anytime you hear the scream, shoot him twice and then quickly try and make a break for the uh, two exclamation points. Satisfaction of this first success didn't. At last, Carl now had to reach the other beacon. He was weary, his muscles ached. The prospect of having to brave the storm again weighed heavily on him. Despite all that, he had to get going.
really annoying that you couldn't simply just jump over the fence there. That is, uh, <laughs> that's, that was great fun. Ah. Okay, so now all we're going to do then is head towards the final exclamation point on the very left-hand side. Uh, again, just keep doing what you're doing with the old Wendingi. As soon as you hear him, give him the old shooting bags and, uh, yeah, head towards that point. And I'll tell you then where the last vending machine is. Hurrah! felt the end was near, and for the first time, it was not his own he was contemplating. So that's it, you don't have to worry about the old Wendingi anymore, uh, so that's uh, all good, you got past that, congratulations. Now we're going to find the final uh, vending machine, it's in this room, as soon as we turn around the corners, nip through the gap here on the left, turn to the right and then the right again, and there it is. So this should be your final, final collectible of the game, hooray, might as well have a drink after, well, crapping the entirety of your own panties. Uh, with a screaming rat thing, screaming rat moose thing. So all we can do now is we're going to climb up. We're going to put all the red fragment, bleh, fragment, the pain, the fear. frag fragmentites, Mister Knights, fragments. What the hell am I trying to say? Anyway, we'll climb up, put the four in, and then uh, it's effectively ending. Yeah. Switch on the machine and hope. Carl had no other option. There was no disputing the power of the device. Carl could feel vibrations in his bones. And that is final. But what's not final is the final. We actually have to climb down the ladder, head towards where all the blue crystals are smashed, and you're going to see the old rat moose thing. Um. Yeah, basically we're gonna have to shoot him completely dead, and then uh, yeah, then we'll have to just do a little bit of exploring in one little house when the cutscene ends, and then that'll be the game's end. As if caught in the violent wind of a cyclone. Then thought the worst was The sight of the weakened creature, tripping and with nowhere to run, shook the detective. Doom with animals are the most dangerous.
Toute personne entendant ce message, nous procédons à so then, you should be popping quite a few achievements here. Four, completing the game without killing an animal, providing you didn't kill any real animal. Obviously, it does say except for broom animals, which is fine. Uh, so you should get that. Uh, you should also get the Je me souviens, which I believe is uh, for completing the game in survival mode in French. And obviously, completing the game normally as well. La belle province. So once you do have those three, there's nothing to do here, you've got to wait until the scene ends effectively, there it is. Um, but of course there is still one more achievement that we're going to get, so we are, once we uh, get get past the credits and... Um, uh, uh, continue, that's what I'm trying to say, you're right. So once we get past the credits, we can go back into the game, we can then fast travel to... Um, oh, geez, right, fast travel to the old house, then we can fix up the rest of the house and finally get that last one. Now, of course, the you should only have the one achievement left. The decontaminator was the Mr. Knight Fragment one, which I missed the first time because I stupid. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, obviously I know a lot of people really enjoyed the first Kona game, so hopefully uh, this was just as enjoyable. Um... Obviously, let me know in the comments section below if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, or if you want a third game, or if you don't. Personally, I would love a third game, because these co these games are great. This I really did enjoy this one. Um, so, yeah, find your dogs, head to the old house, and then fix up the windows, and fix up the uh, fuse box. And finally, old uh, Big Dave up here has been on the top of the stairs for absolute donkey's years. He's finally moved once we've fixed everything. Um, so the final St. Mary statue is going to be on a room to the left, not where old uh, Dave Bags is right here. And uh, once you've found it, that will be that. So you should be on 39 out of 39 achievements. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to look for here. There's literally nothing else to try and find. It's in this room here. So there we go, once you've found it, achievement unlocks, all achievements done. So thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I really hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did and that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend as well. As always, a big, massive shout out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members as well. So thank you so, so much for watching once again. And I'll see you in the next Game Pass game, guys and gals. Big love.